What's going on guys, Visai here and into today's video we're gonna learn a lot about AD carry. Specifically, you're gonna learn laney phase, wave management, matchups, mid game macro, rotations and a lot of amazing stuff. This video is gonna have basically everything that you need to think about about AD carry. So if you play AD carry, if you're looking to learn, if you're looking to get better on it, this is the video for you and this is not the video that you watch it one time and that's all this is a video that you come back and come back and come back to just learn more guys if you enjoyed this make sure you like subscribe and hit the notification bell enjoy you might wonder what is the state of the ad carry is this a good role is this a bad role many people they think like oh you know it's it's the worst role in the game but the other people are like no bro are you crazy i'm a main mid lane and ad carry is the most broken role in the game who who is who is right so i'll show you how i actually do my research to see is the ad carry role a good role or a bad role so the first thing that i do is actually this right i try to see how many ad carries are in top 20. we have one two then we have another one three four people five people six people seven people in top 20 that is very insane also i would look at the win rates of the champions so miss Furton 52 percent win rate nila 52 yasuo 52 twitch 51 jinx 51.70 and what i do i usually compare them with the other roles 52 anivia 52 canon 52 swain so we usually what i do i actually literally count how many how many 52 percent win rate champions are how many 51 percent champions are and i compare it with the ad carry and what i find really uh, in most of the cases as you guys can see jungle looks pretty weak like 51% win rate we don't have so many 52% win rate personally what i believe is that with this looking at like challengers to see how many how many adk remains are in top 5 or top 10 and then you look at the tire list you can actually have a pretty good idea about how is the meta and if the adk is a good role personally i think it's a top 3 role yes you might say yeah but jungle but mid lane i agree it might be a bit easier to climb on this and to improve on this but adk i think is in a good state and we can also see that uh, the champions there are many champions that have pretty good reasonable win rate so what i believe is that adk is top 3 role yes you could argue that you know ad carry is much easier in solo queue in challenger but just think about it you have a role that you can carry if you play support and you play jana lulu it's impossible to carry it's straight up impossible unless you're super good you know the decision making you short call you play alistar in silver gold platinum i want to cry for you man because you don't you can't carry yes you can carry some people argue yeah you can roam you can win the lane if you still rely on your ad carry to win the game even if you win the lane face or not yes you can roam but you can't carry the game yourself unless you play lux unless you play zyra or also because of the fact that the other roles have a very high skill expression and a very high learning curve like jungle for example is the hardest role that i, I personally would recommend my friend that is like play the game for one year i would recommend him jungle ad carry you know is a very balanced role that if you play it and you play it and you play it and you try to vote with yourself you can learn it by yourself and you can climb with it if you play a good vein if you play a good draven if you play a good you're slowly but surely gonna get better mechanically and even the fact that you're gonna get better mechanically will will make you climb in elo so this is why personally i love ad carry how to play the laney phase every time you play a laney phase as eddie carry and you need to know what should you do how do you play it what is your goal in the laney phase in the laney phase it's very simple you can play aggro to win the lane let's say you have a tristana nautilus matchup or you can play safe to not lose the lane when they have a caitlin with a morgana and you have a twitch with yumi so you have to ask yourself am i playing to win or am i playing to just not lose depending on the match of course the second thing is that you need to play for farm so farming is extremely important and educated because you can get to your items and power spikes are extremely crucial for you to get that's why you need good recall timings because you're gonna have that noon quiver in base kraken slayer in base number three which is don't die stupidly so you need to have a good lane with a plan depending on the matchup you need to play around farming and good power specs and as you're doing that the most important thing is not dying stupidly knowing what can kill you and knowing what abilities can kill you like nautilus hook seraphim e whatever it is and it can kill you and then also another very important thing is that you need to play around fights that are going to happen on the river or that are going to happen in the games so the, the later the game is the less important farming becomes so if you're in 35 minutes game and you're just farming 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 when you have four items even after three items even after two items you should already consider grouping more you don't want to be the ad carry that has eight farm per minute and zero damage that is bad the reason why you're farming so much is because you want items and you want to use them you want to do damage 
The first thing that you need to have when you go into the game is runes and builds. You need to actually have an understanding about what you're going to build, what you're about to actually get runes and builds. So this is how I do my research. So if I'm a newbie and I don't know how what to build and I don't know the things. First, I check UGG. I look at the builds. We see right here it has uh, Yomu's cosplay. Then after UGG, I look at the pro players to see what they do. I try to see some similarities. Okay, so we have the uh, collector Yomus here. Collector Yomus, collector Yomus, collector Yomus. This is good. Then I go to the Blitz app and I see also what they recommend. I try to try to just see right here the pro players and I try to check the uh, their builds and see if they try something different. The order of the builds, what they buy. I go to pro builds here. I try to check basically every single game and see some similarities. We also see right here a build that is uh, more crit, but most of the cases it's collector. Then I go to Lolalytics here, a uh, very good website for builds as well. And I just basically look here uh, to see the best, the highest of here. I just put triple basically. And then I see the exact order. I see the win rate. I see, I see the stats. That's how you do it. Then if you really, if you're still confused about the build, you go to look at the guide obviously how do you choose it you choose it based on the popularity and on the similarity of course people are going to tell you no bro but i need to adapt the build it's different it is true it is true that you need to adapt the build third item you can go serial that third item you can go edge of night third item you can go many 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 items but if you don't know or if you're like in the beginning or you just started to play the carry i recommend you to just copy a build just Focus on your mechanics, focus on your wave management, focus on your rotations, focus on your team fighting. Learn your champion first and then runes and builds, you can learn them after. Uh, what I also do, I just go on UOPGG very fast. I click on the Miss Virgin Masters and what I do is that I exactly try to check the Master, Grandmaster, Challenger players. Yeah, you just open and then you, see, you find players that only play the MF like this guy and you're gonna see his build and you try to see, okay, this guy from LVS, he builds like this, good. Next one. This guy, his Master tier, he is on LVS, he builds different. He builds like this, okay. And you put it on a piece of paper or you just keep it in mind. And you try to check the people from different regions, from different um, continents. You will see that on MF it's quite easy because it's the same build, but on most of the champions it varies a lot. So you're going to come up probably with two or three builds. And how do you know which one is better? It's easy. You just play three games or four games on every single build. Obviously, you need to also be able to kind of understand what the build does because some builds are specifics for some compositions. But this is the rule of thumb. Three to four games to try out and experiment the runes and experiment the build. Don't just try one game and be like, oh shit, I don't like this runes. True, but maybe it was just unlucky. Maybe it was a wrong matchup. Maybe something happened in the game. Maybe you had to get used to the to the build. So usually I recommend you minimum three games to get used to a build. Maybe you will like it. Maybe after the third game, you're going to love it. Maybe after the second game, you're going to love it. You're going to try to see something different. You're going to see that the, the champion that you play is actually needs to be played in a very different way. But I feel like in, instead of putting energy on that, it's just better to just improve your fundamentals, your macro and everything else, rather than let me just see which build is better. Let me just do this optimization with the build and other things that is not necessarily going to give you ELO. Uh, yes, sure. If you're Grandmaster already and you're 400, 500, 600 LP and you're trying to optimize your builds, yes, it can make the difference, but not in below 300 LP masters, in my opinion. Lady Carry Main struggling to make an impact in your games. Is your damage output disappointingly low, leaving you feeling frustrated and powerless in the role you love? Introducing our specialized coaching program designed to supercharge your AD carry performance. Imagine a world where your damage, decision making and farming skills are 10 times better and the outcome of your games is no longer left to chance. Meet Chase, just like you, he was once stuck in the same position, facing low damage and inconsistency in his games. Let's see what happened after his coaching experience. From Diamond 4 to Master Tier. Wow! And here is Jordan and Brett. Both transformed into formidable AD carry after the coaching session. These success stories aren't just isolated cases. They are a part of a community of over 3,243 players who benefited from the coaching program. If it worked for them, why not for you? Picture yourself as an unstoppable AD carry. It's not a dream. It's your potential with the coaching session. Don't wait any longer. Visit Visite.com, book your coaching and become the AD carry the enemy team hates to play against. Trading. When it comes to trading and matchups and laning, there are specific ideas that you need to really understand. So first of all is the goal and the plan of the laning phase. The plan of the laning phase is 
uh, basically what your, your objective is inside of the game. The plan can be to win the lane phase by killing them, win by farming better if you have a Caitlyn Morgana against an Ezreal Karma, or it can simply be to survive if you play a Twitch uh, Yumi against a Caitlyn Morgana. The Twitch goal is to play safe and to be even everybody even and you shouldn't be thinking like the normal player of ad carry thinks oh i need to how do i win i need to win the lane yeah. okay but what does winning the lane mean because you can win the lane for twitch he can be even in farm if he's gonna have 90 farm at 12 minutes and Caitlyn is gonna have 90 farm at 12 minutes that's winning if he's gonna have 80 farm at 12 minutes and Caitlyn has 90 farm that's winning that is winning. Yes, being even is winning in this matchup because Twitch outscales better. If he's gonna be 60 farm and Caitlyn is 90, that is not necessarily winning. In that case, Caitlyn won the matchup. So you got what I mean right now, right? This is the matchup. This is basically how you see it. So Lucian Nami against Twitch Jarvan. We need to win by killing them. We need to stomp them. What they need to do is to play slow. So that's how you make the plan. And the plan has to be based on the matchup. And it can be an all-in matchup, it can be a poke matchup like the Caitlyn Morgana or it can simply be a scaling matchup like CV Yumi, Twitch Yumi and all of these kind of matchups. So this is the plan of the laning phase and that's how you make it. The plan of the laning phase is very related to the matchup, to the champion you're playing obviously first of all and to the support you're having second of all. And based on the matchup you are basically playing in terms of the weight management and in terms of the trading in a different way. So for example, if you want to manage your waves as Twitch and Yumi, most of the cases you would like to push, you would like to get priority, you would like to perma push like a psycho, like a maniac, because Caitlyn Morgana, if they don't get the push, it's going to be very difficult for them to redo anything. But realistically speaking, to be honest with you, you won't be able to do it. You won't be able to do it, not in a million years, because they will push it so fast and you're going to stay into your tower. So the wave management in this specific situation would be play reactive, try to get the experience of the minions as the kid is going to build a lot of uh, a lot of minions and try to get as much farm as possible so managing the wave in this case is hard because you have to play reactive given the matchup that you play given the fact that they have a lot more range in case of caitlin caitlin has to push the lane has to build slow pushes because if she's trying to actually uh, slow push three waves right here if she's trying to make a big wave right here with minions and she's trying to crush this wave into the tower the twitch will actually have a very very hard time to farm because obviously he's going to have three waves to farm caitlin is going to put traps right here right here right here right here and it's going to be very 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 hard for them to play the laning phase so the caitlin has to play around the win condition of the wave management with we need to slow push we need to push first of all to get prior but most importantly we need to poke them and zone them and after we actually establish the zoning control we slow push three to four minions into the tower we crash the four minions and then we try to play either four types with our jungle or we chunk him or we get plates easy peasy for the caitlin so that's his plan of course if you play uh with the lucian nautilus it would be a bit different in this case you can contest the priority a little bit more level one you can queue the the, the caitlin through the minions as lucian and you can try to push the minions and if you get level two advantage it is possible it is true that my, some of you that are in like grandmaster and challenger might contradict me and say that caitlin morgana anyway says prior because morgana can start w but in general morgana can't start w because if she starts w then notice can go in at level one and she usually starts q but either ways morgana kitten has prior over lucian notice which is true if you grandmaster i agree with you but just as a rule of thumb as a rule of thumb this is basically how you can see the matchup this is basically how you see the support and the the, the ad carry this is how you make the plan and this is how you actually make the plan with the waves and in the following examples i'm going to give you five different examples on trading waves and plan how do you make it and how do you really execute it so let's get let's get a look at this the first example is everyone is master tier last season and this is basically on my ad carry smurf so Lucian Nami, we saw this matchup, we need to win easy peasy, Twitch, Jarvan, they need to play safe, they need to chill, they need to scale. 
we need to try to play to zone them and to get prior on the wave so what i do is i walk up to the wave i try to actually get an angle to queue through the minion and on twitch here and i try to pressure him a lot the nami and javan they're just gonna nami is probably just gonna out sustain the guy i try to queue through the minions miss it but the most importantly is to get prior what twitch does is playing very reactive he's playing safe he's playing back he doesn't really try to contest me too much he just doubles the minions and he tries to push right now we're getting level two and i just insta dash so so far we played it good we got the push if we would have get pushed in in this matchup you can say that we're griefing it we're ending it we're, it's not it's not okay and i see a lot of players they play gene they play and they get pushed in it's very embarrassing when i have like a range support and i have a better ad carry in the early game uh, and i i get pushed in that's pretty bad now of course he wants to get a minion i just punish him you want to get this minion sister you gotta get punished and now the javan actually went in on me we have a lot of minions here i paid attention to the twitch positioning so i was very confident on exhausting him just immediately going on him easy peasy i flash on him and we immediately killed the twitch as well after that we actually just pushed the wave and easy peasy we won the laney phase this is until level three we executed the plan pretty good twitch was actually smurfing so he was around i think he was master maybe even a little bit more and he actually stayed even though he's level two because he saw how big the wave is he knew that we are competent players and we're low so we're gonna recall so we actually stayed to push this wave you can see that we actually played accordingly to the plan in this laney phase so okay let's go so Paras Velkos, what do we need to do? The first plan. Do we need to win the lane? Do we need to win the lane by killing? Do we need to win the lane by by CSing better? Or do we need to just play the lane to not lose? Well, Jin, uh, Blitzcrank is all in lane. Varus, Velkos is poke lane. Do we, need, we can win the lane. We have a lot more range. We have double comet right here. As long as I don't get hit by the hook, all what we need to do is to poke and zone. So the uh, plan is we need to play to win the lane by zoning so we need to trip poke them and to zone them second of all when it comes to the trading i want to play around my e and i only want to trade when i have the comet preferably most of the cases right and i just need to hit my skill shots and then when i don't have it and i'm on cooldown i want to play it slow easy peasy of course the hook i don't need to hit it to get hit by it uh, so that's basically the win condition i need to get cs advantage if not killing them but cs advantage is the biggest thing because velcos virus if they play it really well they will get good recalls Jin is going to start boots for potions he's going to get fleet footwork blah 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 okay this guy is diamond too so he's not really the best player in the world Jin this Jin. so he already does big mistakes here going torrents blade don't talk about that of course getting healed and not cleanse against virus velcos fetal sick oh okay we don't talk about that okay, we don't talk about that we don't talk about that so we see that a lot of players even though this is high diamond it should be theoretically a good rank you know it's solo queue so many people will make mistakes so we get prior here of course uh we just poke i try to get the e on both of them because this is my win condition and i'm trying to get the prior i'm trying to hit the minions constantly because i know that this is a gene and gene can easily get the prior back by using the q on the minions uh, so right now I try to get prior when I have E again and I have Comet I use it on the Jin. I don't try to split poke on two people I use the, the poke on the same guy in general now I just zone there is no reason to push because I can just zone if Jin is walking up the minions like he does right now I can easily poke him right here he was walking up super super far like he didn't really uh, understand that when we're having minions advantage like this he's not supposed to walk up because we have more range and he has less range and he needs to play around the blitzcrank hook which can't really do it because i'm playing always behind the minion so right here is impossible for the for the blitzcrank to really do anything and we can see that how easy it is to play around the wave i'm not pushing i'm not really doing anything here i'm just getting the way i'm just zoning them okay i'm just last thing and zoning them with my spells i'm going into the brush because i want to make sure they don't see me when i use the q but i saw that they have a word so what i do is that instead of dodging down like blitzcrank thought i'm gonna dodge up of course who would dodge up here um so i just want to make it unpredictable you guys can see that i'm always going on the poke with the poke on the lower target and i'm not splitting damage on the blitzcrank unless it's absolutely necessary i do not use my poke on two people i use it on one guy easy peasy I slow push right here. This is good. And then I go Fog of War. This is Fog of War. They don't really see me. As you guys can see, I go Fog of War. I know that. And when I go in, in uh, range, it's very difficult for Jin to actually dodge this. He tried it, but it's difficult because I came in Fog of War pretty fast. And then Jin ends up dying. And when we press tab, we have a significant lead. It's three minutes in the game. We stay, we push, we recall. Easy peasy. The way I push, we don't talk about it. It's super efficient. 
I hit the, the minions in front a little bit and then I try to charge my Q automatically. I wait, I would wait Velkos to get the minions to low HP and I hit all of the minions with the Q. Efficient, fast, very clean, smooth. Pushing the wave, recalling immediately, going on the lane phase, very fast. Jin tried to push this and then we slow push. After we slow push right here, we try to zone him. We are having a consistent lead. He should never be fighting right here. He should never ever be fighting. This is a big mistake. Blitzkrieg was mid. All what he had to do is to play safe. All what he had to do is to play chill. All what he had to do is to not trade. He traded right here. And we can see that what actually was in a very... Let me just play the lane to, to win it by farming better. We won it. Because, also because we knew what to do with the wave. We knew what to do with the trading. We knew what to do in general easy peasy so this was the plan okay the next example is going to show you what to do if your support is not on the same page with you what to do if he's not really actually doing what he's supposed to do okay so with miss Furton and zach we're supposed to win the lane theoretically because against lucian for zach is very very difficult for him to catch him rakan is extremely mobile and mf is okay into lucian but MF with Zack into Lucian and Rakan is on the cell. Okay, this is really not a very hard matchup. It's a 60% matchup to 40% matchup. So we have a chance to win this. It's just not really uh, in our favor. So what is the plan here in terms of the goal, in terms of the objective the, of the lane? Well, we can win the lane. So the, the, the plan is to win the lane by, by killing them. It's just not going to be easy. And we know it. Of course, we don't really talk about CS advantage or anything else because we are playing Miss Furton against Lucian, a very aggressive matchup, and we're not really talking about just just uh, 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 just chilling because we have Zach and Rakan, and we're not talking really about scaling because we have Lucian versus MF. So let's see what we're gonna do right now. So all what we're trying to do right now is to get prior. They did not leash because they had the the cane here, so this was a pretty big advantage by them. Because they get priority. In terms of the wave, I didn't really say it, but we have to get prior, but not really too much. Like we have to control the wave, and as 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 much as we have control of the wave and we can zone them, that's it. We shouldn't really push too hard. We shouldn't really we just have to establish a little bit of a minion lead. Let's say we have six and they have four. That's enough. One to two minions. One to two minions is already enough um, for that. So this is basically what we were trying to do. We didn't really do it because obviously. Uh, Rakan is useful at level 1, Zach is completely useless and or almost completely useless especially against uh, against Lucian. So what we did is basically playing really reactive like you guys can see that right now as a MF I'm trying to zone really um, but I'm not really trying to fight necessarily like even like now Zach is, is trying to do something here but I'm not really even following because I know that Rakan has W so I'm like very hesitant. I'm like hovering him but I'm not really following to like auto attack Rakan so I'm trying to uh, trying to zone them wave is coming into me right now so this is pretty good this is pretty good i just try to zone them as much as possible we're not really trying to fight too hard because i know that my job is to just poke them a little bit and then right now when they went on me unfortunately uh the zack couldn't really hit anything really on them because the lucian had e so now we have to play reactive so yes i would have preferred to get a nautilus to be easy but since i have a zack i have to play very reactive so what to do if if you need to win the lane but you can't it's simple you play around your support and try to make the best out of it okay you can't win the lane if it's no problem it can happen but you're not really gonna end it or force anything as you guys can see i'm not really forcing anything i'm just staying in the lane chilling just farming and waiting again going, waiting for something to happen and then of course zach went in we tried to really do something but the cane is coming as well here i try to go on him immediately flash he uses a w and then i'm actually fine here then we try to recall actually end up staying for the wave as well here because i need it for the dirk and i knew that the chances of me dying here is uh, pretty low pretty low since kane was already low as well so now i stay in the lane phase with slow pushing i don't really want to fast push immediately because i know that if i try to fast push this one it's gonna actually meet right here with the next wave so i try to slow push as slow as i can okay this is not a not the best slow push in the world because we have significantly more minions but i just wanted to make sure if i push it a bit faster this wave will meet this wave a little bit more like this, like like this, this, and this. And I would have to push this wave, which makes me overextended because I have to be here. But if I slow push this one, because I didn't really know that it can, I didn't really know, I know I knew for sure that I can't crush it in time. So I slow push that one, I fast push this one. And after I fast push, I go forward. And after I go forward, I just stay on the bot lane and I play very reactive. Look at my positioning right here, guys. Just look at this. I'm not really doing anything. Look, I'm, I'm hovering my Zack. 
I'm looking at the Rakan W. So I'm just playing around my abilities, playing around Zex abilities, and playing around Rakan abilities, right? Because I know that Delusion, realistically speaking, he can't really do much unless Rakan goes in, right? So this is what we really try to do. And then here I actually didn't really auto attack him again because I wanted to steal the kill, right? It's super important for you to steal the kill as a carry. Then what do I do? I push, I try, I need to ulti the wave. If you're below diamond, I don't recommend you to do that because below diamond people are fighting 24 seven and you're not having a uh, ulti for two minutes because you try to fix a wave state. That's not very smart. Again, this is not diamond. This is high diamond to low masters, which is really like a rank where draft matters. Um, like these little small things matter but of course in lower elo i don't recommend you so this is what we did really i'm even i'm playing very reactive i played it on my super my positioning was pretty good i didn't force anything i didn't like f like die by following zach but i still followed zach and hovered him so that's basically what i did and right now my goal is okay i'm a bit behind because the illusion actually got a free kill uh, early on but I'm not, I'm still in the game and I'm still, even though Zach is not really able to do much, as you can see, he can't really do much because of the matchup. I'm still in the game and we're still actually playing the game. So what we learn from this one is simply that if your support is not going in, if your support doesn't do anything, try to ping him. And if he doesn't go in or if he simply, the matchup doesn't allow, play reactive farm, wait again, chill, farm, scale, try to get your items. It's not really a big of a deal if you play Lucian and you're like, okay, but I have to win the lane because I play Miss Fortune. Well, true. You have to win the lane because you play Miss Fertin, but if it's not possible for you and if, if your engage doesn't really do his job or simply he can't do anything, then you have only one option and that is to play safe. So that's basically how you play these kind of matchups. In the next situation, we are going to see one matchup that is actually pretty hard and pretty unwinnable. So the question is, what do you do if your matchup is unwinnable? So right now, we're having two champions, we're having Kai'Sa with Milio against Caitlyn and Swain. This is a hard lane and since you play Kai'Sa and they have significantly more range here in this specific matchup, it's going to be pretty difficult for you to really do anything on this champion. So what do you do in these cases? Because if you get pushed in, then it should be over. If you get So we're going to try to see like what this guy did and we're going to see what you should do in lanes like this. So obviously, as we said, it's very difficult for the Kai'Sa to play. She's going to get zoned. She's going to get uh, poked and it will be very difficult for her to farm. It's tough. It's tough. She can't really do much right here. It's tough. And I mean, realistically speaking, how can you trade? How can you kill them? All what you have to do is to well, look at them, how they poke you and it's GG. So the most important thing here is to have a very realistic plan. So the plan in this the game plan uh, is in this case is to farm and to not lose HP. So when he is playing level one to trade, when he is playing level one, to go in when he's playing level one to actively do something that's bad so all what he has to do is to try to control the wave if possible and if he loses the, the control of the wave he should play safe and conserve his hp so as we can see right here this is a good trade he just traded back so this is all good code so the most important thing in this matchup is be realistic ask yourself how can i win this matchup but winning this matchup as i said not like oh, i'm gonna kill them winning this matchup in here is simply being even or a little bit behind in cs you need to also adapt your itemization this guy he didn't start long so three potion this guy he didn't buy refillable potion in this matchup this guy he also leashed in a matchup with emilio so that's gonna screw him up as well let alone the fact that he picks kaisa with emilio which is absolutely garbage also you can do review your games after you actually end this game you have to like browse through your games and try to see in the laning phase what are you gonna see so you're gonna look to exactly based on the game plan so the game plan was don't lose hp be be, be even in farm so you this is what you're gonna actually review you're gonna review when you're getting poked when you're trading and most importantly your deaths so this is what reviewing you're reviewing based on the plan if the plan of skating is to win the lane if I send to poke then the review of Caitlyn when she's looking at this game is of course her deaths very important but additionally she has to see if she could have poked better or if she could have just used her range better if she could have just tried to do something better to actually make the enemy suffer and be low hp under the tower so you do the review based on the plan of the game in the next example and the last one for trading we're going to analyze a poke versus poke matchup ezreal senna against varus Serra. so let's see how we played it in this matchup 
So us, we're actually respecting the other rules with itemization, adapting based on the plan. The plan in this game is to poke. The plan in this game is to try to chunk them in the lane. But if you want to chunk them Varus and Zerat, the most important thing, if you want to allow Senna and allow Ezreal to actually uh, poke aggressively, is by controlling the wave and pushing. We ask our jungle to start top lane because this is a very, very high volatility matchup. If they get first in the lane phase and they poke us with Comet and Halo Blades Varus, it's going to be tough. So the first Q, I use it on the wave to get the passive and to get the 10% attack speed. I try to get the prior and we can see that even this is like high diamond, they still did a huge, huge, huge mistake. So they leashed right here. And we can see that after they leash, what I can do, I can actually invest the Qs onto the Varus uh, and push the minions. We can zone them. So this was the game plan. This is all a byproduct of us playing the laning phase clean and uh, not leashing. The most important thing here is that if you're looking to really poke, you want to look to get the push. I'm 20 farm right now. The Varus has only 9. I go for a very fast word. And we're going to keep pushing and pushing and pushing and pushing and pushing. What we're actually doing, this, this guy is extremely, extremely, extremely low on the Varus. He's actually trading with Senna. I auto attack him. They don't actually have heal. And right now, after they push the wave, we want to recall. We don't really want to stay with Elise here, even though she's pressuring Zerat. And we actually establish a 31 against 13 farm lead, which is extremely, extremely huge. How simple. In the next example, we're going to talk particularly about pushing, hard pushing. We're going to give three examples when you should use it and why you should use it. So, hard shoving or pushing is always preferable if you can do something in league that is going to give you more gold and you can recall on more gold it's always preferable so you should always do it unless obviously a few aspects that you need to take in keep in mind and take it into consideration it is good if you want to rotate or move away from bot lane but if you need to move on the bot lane you can always consider fast pushing and it's also good if you want to recall Although these are extremely big advantages and you're going to see pro players all over the world trying to use this strategy in their games, there are some big disadvantages of hard pushing and we're going to see it very very soon. So let's watch this gameplay to actually get a bit of a grasp about when do you hard push. So now as Relsena, we're in the lane, we're getting ganked, we kill Varus, so what should we do? Well, obviously, we need to push the lane phase. Why? Well, first of all, we kind of need to recall we have 600 gold theoretically we could stay but since the chances of us dying right here is pretty high if we stay into the tower we need to try to get a push we need to push this even though we are pretty low especially because the likelihood of the enemy jungle coming and killing us is uh, pretty low if you think about it other things that i need to consider is how much gold you have whether you should want to recall or not but again as i said the likelihood of the enemy jungle killing you or simply the current wave state position slash the wave state in general, the state of it. So right now it's slow pushing into them because we have one, two, three, four, five, six minions and they have one, two, three, four, five minions right here. So it's slowly pushing into them. The reason why I push one more is because one, I have only 700 gold. So my gold is not really the most ideal. Two, is because if we can actually take a look at the minimap right now this wave is not going to crush we can see on our wave right here that their wave is basically right here meaning that it's not going to crush so we need to crush and obviously um we need to think about the enemy jungle so if i was extremely low hp if i knew that i'm super likely to be killed here i'll most likely not crush intentionally but since in this specific situation i have senna that is healing me i have a decent wave and i'm ezreal and the enemy jungle is just a belvech all of these things are gonna tell me okay you might die here if they flash on you but it's a 20 to 30 percent chances that you die therefore you can take a small risk with a big reward one reward is you get more gold two um, you crash the wave into the tower and you're gonna get a clean 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 crush if you're not sure what you should be doing you should look at your current goal to see if you should stay or if you shouldn't stay and obviously you should try to count your push power which in Ezreal Senna is pretty big and the likelihood of you dying by pushing you need to count the enemy jungle and sometimes you need to count the enemy bot lane position whether they are coming to the lane phase or they are already there whether they can kill you or not which in this case they're pretty weak so they can't and then the current wave state um, uh, was in the middle so I could have easily pushed that as we see right here and then I get a clean crash and I just recall how do we decide that we need to stay we decide on one our gold Two, the likelihood of us dying right here and obviously three the jungle position helped a lot a lot a lot for me to be able to stay there if i don't know if i don't have my jungle behind i'll probably not stay another situation where pushing is a very good thing to do 
let's take a look at this so as let's say now master theater mmr diamond on mmr senna nami i go for a word right here with ezreal i try to slow push and we try to actually poke them a little bit i go for a word and as i go for a word unfortunately the senna is not really trying to help me to go for a word and she is just trying to pressure when i'm not there so what's going to end up actually happening is that she's going to die immediately there is not really much i can do i try to get samira and right here what i really want to do here is obviously no not push Bruh. so in this specific case i have 837 gold so you might wonder and say oh but you need minimum 1000 for sheen right well true but at the same time i need tier right now and that is 400 gold and obviously i can also go for the long sword here so i can go for tier and long sword the problem is in this specific situation the wave is coming into me and nami is going to easily punish me so right now i need to ask myself can i really push this wave in time so i can crush this i can get a clean crush because as we can see this wave is actually relatively close right and what i need to do is that i need to push this wave and the next wave and it takes 30 seconds to get from base to the lane uh without the movement speed from when you are dying so after you died you get a movement speed so you basically go you're gonna go in the lane to 24 to 25 seconds so right now in 24 to 25 seconds i need to push this wave and the next one and then just get to recall so what do i do here it's very simple i don't push the reason why i don't push is because i know that i don't have enough push power right now and i have kind of a reasonable amount of gold right now to recall on if i had 300 gold then i wouldn't recall uh, but i also will not push here if i uh if i'm in this situation since i see this situation i read it very well i go into the brush and i recall and nami right now she's also recalling so what she should have done right now with nami is that she should have stayed she should wait samaira and right now on the samaira she should push this so this is a wave that i love it and now i tell my jungle to actually come bot lane and if he wants to come which he, i don't think he did um this would have been a very easy situation to play i trimmed the wave a little bit and ggbg unfortunately the senna was autofilled and this doesn't really work as planned but you can see that pushing is not always the best thing to do based on what based on one your gold uh, how much gold you need for the, a good power spike and two uh, based on the wave and how much push power you have based on your champion and obviously the third thing would be how likely is it for enemy jungle or anyone to kill you which in that specific case it wasn't really likely because i was full hp so you need to read very well the the state because there are cases where you can recall on a freeze there are, there are cases where you can push and it's always better to push if you if you need a little bit more gold but sometimes if you already have the gold for the item you can just recall and let the wave to come into you in the next one we're going to have a very simple example on how to push and why to push so right now we're playing lucian and they are actually ganking us we are getting ganked right here we are killing all of them almost which is in the tower so right now what should i do option number one stay and freeze option number two freeze and recall option number three push this one and push the next one to crush of course uh, on the freeze options you need to trim the wave trimming the wave would be basically we need to kill so we need to have the cannon the caster and two melees or uh, two casters the cannon and one melee the rest we can kill that's how you trim the minis you need to have four minis uh, in general so right now what i do is i press tab i see that i have 1.5k gold i know that if i just try to trim the wave and recall i will have a decent goal decent buy but right now what i do is actually i push the reason why i push is because i know that uh, i have enough hp i have enough push power and i really want to go for recall so i do not want to stay and freeze and right here i could also look to freeze or potentially just trim the wave and recall as well but the reason why i didn't really do it is because uh, I wanted to get my full record bow and quiver, which I don't think I could have done it without pushing. If I knew that I have this item without pushing, then I would probably just trim the wave a little bit and then I just recall. So I decide based on one, how much gold I want to get to my push power, which is pretty huge. Three, how likely it is for me to die of enemy bot lane, pretty zero percent because enemy support is dead. Or how likely it is for me to die in general and right here it's in uh, against the jungle which is dead as well so this is the reason why i pushed right here how to use the fast push and when to use it exactly so let's take a look at this so mf against rakan and lucian we have zach on the support role let's see what's going to happen here so we're actually getting a gank kane is coming from behind 
end right now as Kane is coming from behind I try to flash away I try to get as many minions as possible and then I recall right now I just realized that they're actually uh, pushing this way where Akan is also recalling I saw that Kane just left here so I knew that uh, I need a little bit more gold, I need 100 gold for the Dirk and I knew that I can greed a little bit. So what I do is that I go in Super Fog of War, I knew that they're actually just gonna recall like this and then I just stay for a little bit, just a little bit of gold and then I immediately go for the recall. So in, ca in case Kane was actually here and trying to rehover me, he can go on me, he can dive me but he's basically gonna pay with his life. The reason why I stayed here is because that I knew Rakan is pretty low, I knew that Lucian had no mana so the chances of him diving me and getting one for one. But right now I don't really push because I, my HP is super super low so I can't really push this. Of course if my HP was a little bit healthier like this or maybe even half HP and I had more mana then I can push this. If my HP is full HP and I have zero mana I make the same decision I repeat I make the same decision I recall anyways because I know that I'm not going to be able to push this and if I have low mana I don't want to stay here to slow push I don't want to fast push without mana so the best most reliable is um, just recall another situation when you have to be pushing right here uh, is the following one so right now I am slow pushing and slow pushing is better if I play Varus with Velkos and I want to poke them. There is no reason to crush this wave. I can just wait the next wave to come here. I slow push three waves. I stack three waves and when the three waves are going to go in the tower, I can easily poke the Jin and actually kill him and get lots of plays. So there is no reason to really push here unless, unless the Fiddle 6 is actually trying to invade. He's pinging me right now. He's pinging on my way. So this is my responsibility to really trash, try to crush this wave because if I crush this wave, I obviously uh, I'm gonna make sure they can't follow and obviously I'm gonna make sure the genie is also gonna lose a lot of farm into the tower so uh, yes you can crush if you want to recall you can crush and fast push if you want to be able to move on the river and you can also crush and push if your jungle is invading and you want to force the enemy to really stay into the tower and well this way they're not able to really follow and the last situation as i said is the drake situation so right now the feeder six is heading to the drake and he is um, not starting it he's actually doing the scuttle so right now i just focus on my laney phase and i try to poke and then right now he actually started so if he starts it many people they think that once he starts it you need to push which is true in most of the cases there are many cases also when if you have the wave in the middle or if the wave is even right here if you're looking at the drake right here and it really feels like you know they can do it by themselves and it's pretty easy for them to do it by themselves let's say they are doing drake the drake is like 2k hp and you don't, you don't need to be there there then you don't need to push the wave obviously what it will matter or as well it will be mid prior if the corky uh, has no pit prior let's say he's pushed in the tower tristana is pushing right here then again that increases your the chances of us getting the drake without even a fight really breaking out because of course the enemy jungle is not insane enough to engage there in a fight so all of these things uh, can contribute to your decision in general yes if they are starting drake and you're concerned of oh enemy team is gonna go like this over the wall they're gonna get engaged you can push and go there are many situations when you don't need to do that if you know enemy jungle is dead and they're not gonna follow or enemy mid lane is dead or simply you have a 10-0 jungle that can easily solo the drake then you can consider well not pushing the wave league of legends is not really about rules league of legends doesn't have rules it's always like do this and the exception is this 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 this, this. like you have a rule but to the rule you have basically like 20 exceptions like here i can always tell you hey if the jungle starts the drake you should always push the wave but i would be wrong because there are many cases where your mid has prio enemy jungle is dead you do not need prio you can stay here and in the in this position and just poke Jin, not even trying considering to follow the drake if the enemy jungle is top plane or he just got the void links uh, then again you don't need to get prior you don't need to push uh, this kind of variables if enemy bot lane is dead you don't need to push um, unless you can get plates or the tower in which case again you don't help for the drake so there are many situations where if you don't need to be there simply because your jungle is okay enemy jungle is top lane enemy mid lane is dead you have a mid lane there as well you have full vision in them enemy jungle you know for sure that they're not going to follow then keep the wave in the middle slow push try to build a big wave then take the tower or simply just take the tower take your plates if you don't need to be there then don't don't, don't be there if you don't need to 
push to be there then don't push you can always also move a little bit without pushing even though the most reliable is pushing and going so when you want to follow just move your camera there and be like hey is there a chance that is there a, is there a high chance that they're going to follow and of course now Cork is the same HP with uh, Tristana even though you can't know this in game it really looks on the minimap if you just take a look at the minimap you will see that they are well in the lane so they are fighting each other so they will probably move at the same time because uh, of course in game you can't think about all of these things move your camera towards mid lane and that's crazy i mean okay if you're faker you can but most of the players can't do it it's very simple you look at your teammates and if you see that jungle is not top lane or that herald is not really on the map blitz is not on the map gene is not on the map and then corky can also move then it's always safer to push but if they are dead or top lane or is super sure that you can actually get this for whatever reason then you should not push this and you should just slow push or just take your tower and even crash so don't try to get into the mindset of okay now i need to help them if it's not needed even though in general this is a good mindset to have to be able to contribute to the team fight right now we're gonna actually talk about slow pushing when to use it and how to use it so let's actually analyze this game so as i said when you push the lane you usually try to push because one you want to look to recall or two you want to look to go on the river or three you want to pressure the enemy under the tower and so you get an advantage by trying to push the wave in slow push is usually better every single time you don't need to do that so you don't need to recall slow push is better you don't need to move on the river you want to zone them in the lane and stay them with them slow push is better slow push is better in every single case where you know that there is no really advantage gain by trying to crush i play with pike and lucian which is a pretty strong one love to be two against miss Verton and rail what should we do well i don't need to push really i can just slow push and i can just use the q on the minions to just poke them now i do not want to push why it's because lucian has stronger early game than mf in this specific matchups in general it's a bit more complicated so now i don't really hit the minions much i'm just looking to zone and a slow push how do i keep the slow push i only last hit i tried to kill the minions that was a mistake i just wanted to kill the angle to go on i look to slow push yes some could say oh but you push too fast true i did push too fast and i hit the minions too much right now what i'm gonna really try to do after this wave is crushed is that i'm gonna look to just keep it here just last it why it's because one i don't want to recall so i don't need to push two i don't need to be on the river and three if i push anyways i will give them the three three uh, minions here so what do i keep doing right here slow push and just last it it's that simple do you need recall no do you need to go for a word or do you need to go in the river no then use slow push of course that slow push can also be used um if you want to stack a few waves and you want to look to dive this is very useful if you play caitlin karma if you play like a champions that can actually just poke so look at me right now with lucian and pike so i know we can zone they are relatively low and look what i do i don't push at all and every time when they step for dominion boop, boom shakalaka q on the minion i don't need to push i'm slow pushing i only zone why it's because again i just this is the only thing that i can do just poking them i have zinzao around me so now i press tab and i already have 10 minutes advantage almost 10 minutes advantage another situation when i slow push i come from base right here i go to the lane and my wave is at the moment really stuck right here if i'm not sure that i can crush this in time of course i'm not gonna push it now because what's gonna end up happening is that the next wave that is coming right now from base in like a little bit is gonna actually travel slowly but surely and as i push the wave it's actually gonna meet with my waves right here and it's gonna be frozen and i would have to crush here so what i do is very simple so what i do is that i wait one more wave and then after i wait one more wave um i just try to crush that wave in this case it wasn't really so clear because our wave was pretty big but in general if you have like if you don't have so many minions like this and you have a normal wave you will wait the next wave right here and you can either crush second wave uh, if you want to go for the river if you want to go for a war or simply what is better is um you crush three waves uh, then we try to uh, end up pushing here and that's pretty much it that's basically how you use the slow push super important be sure that you're not gonna slow push after your tower or enemy tower is gone in that case you just really want to push the wave into the enemy tower so you can actually force the enemy ad carry to move there so for example here if i'm slow pushing i'm unable to move on mid lane so obviously i push the wave and i'm never going to actually um slow push on the, the boat lane like right here same thing for shen he just needs to crush he just needs to crush so he can uh, make the wave be here so twisted fate 
start his top lane yes i know he's gonna be forced to go on the bot lane so be sure to not actually slow push or freeze after the uh, first tower of the game is gone and you can say that oh but i heard less i heard i'm not saying in challenger i'm not saying in grandmaster and i'm not saying in lcs adc or any pro league where people know what they're doing if you play in a solo queue environment and you're below grandmaster so you watch this skill cap challenger tips and tricks guess what most of the rules won't apply for you players and this is why i designed a coaching program that is really for you so that if you feel like you're in emerald or in gold and you feel stuck uh, the coaching is specialized and personalized for you for your mistakes but if you truly want to improve and you want to get better try out coaching because the coaching can be just for you situation for the slow push i come back to the lane phase and the wave is actually coming right here it's slow pushing into them right now so it's slowly going into them so right here usually you just want to look to slow push you just want to look to chill you don't really want to crash this wave unless you have a lot of items and you know you can actually do it in time and you can get plates if you can get plates uh, obviously uh, the slow push is stupid i looked at the karma and i saw that he is actually having ezreal he gets him and then i immediately push because i know that I have so many items and I can immediately crash this in time. I try to be efficient with the push queue. All of the minions here push as fast as possible. And I just try to get this tower. So in another situation, if the Ezra doesn't die, I will definitely not push this. Because I know that if he recalls right now and he comes back in the lane, by the time that I, I try to crash this wave, of course, the next minion wave from base is going to met here. And I need to crash that one as well. And Ezra is going to miss maybe two, three minions. Worst case for him. But it's better to just look to... Uh, slow push if you're not sure that you can actually make him uh, den deny him minions or you can't get plates safer to slow push let's see the next situation for the slow push and the last situation for the slow push right now what we're actually doing is that we're keeping the wave here the wave is slowly pushing into them but slowly push into them and maybe on the next wave or the next next wave uh, i can crash so then i get queued here and then Danila went in i know we can easily win this because she's level two so we're fighting on this wave which she should never be doing one samaira nila useless level one level two you fight at level three same thing with alistar same thing with fees same thing with zed there are so many champions at level three is the spike we kill them and of course right now since we kill them we want to look to make sure we crush and it's either i slow push this one and i fast push on the next wave when this wave is here or i just push like immediately and since i know for sure that leon i can just w and just go into the big wave here and i can kill all of the minions i have enough push power to push i'm not like uh i'm a bit lazy here and just pushing really hard i'm not really waiting the the, the next wave to come here and then i push that would have been also an option which is safer of course if you if i was like low hp like 100 hp then i would wait that wave to come here i have two waves and then i crash because i have to push it while i'm in this position compared to pushing to the first wave here and the second wave here which kind of makes me greedy just slow push one wave fast push next wave but in general if you know you can push it the first wave just push it to get it out of the way and play from there next one is freezing what is a freeze how do you freeze well first of all you need to have more minis into the enemy wave so for example if we have six minis right here our wave can be four minis and if the wave is coming into into one side then that means the six minis are going to kill the four minis the problem with these numbers is that if the enemy minion wave that which is coming from the base right now is actually coming uh, closer to their tower which is a true thing problem is that this is going to slow push into Lucian right here right so this is not really a freeze but if we have minimum four more minions into the enemy wave then that's not the case anymore and this would be a freeze as in if we have let's say six minions right here and we have 10 minions on the other side that's a difference of four minions this will mean that even though the wave is right here and the next incoming minion wave is getting closer to the enemy tower as we can see here the four minions advantage right here of the red minions are going to be strong enough so the in the the incoming minion wave from lucian is going to come and it's going to meet there uh, because the 10 minions are strong enough to keep the wave and maintain the wave here so the next incoming second minion wave from lucian's base is going to be here in time i hope this is clear i made it a bit too uh, complicated uh, but yeah this is basically a freeze so streaming so right now this is a freeze why is because we see that the wave stays in a position and it's like a lot of minions against not so many minions so right here we see we have one wave 
but they also have one wave it's just they have those one two three four five six minions right they have six minions extra they have d6 against d6 so 12 against six minions that are blue so how many minions do you think mf should trim because we're talking about right now about trimming the wave so if she's smart she's gonna trim exactly two minions because she wants to actually have four minions advantage so if we have six here she wants to have ten here so she needs to trim four minions which minions she should freeze usually minions are actually stronger they're tankier uh, but they're not stronger in terms of damage and casters they have less hp but they actually do more damage so I like to do it with two casters, two uh, melees, but I think the best one is with three casters, one melee. The melee is very easy to kite. The melee will tank the wave there, and the caster will do a lot of damage, so you can make sure that the enemies are going to lose a lot of minis. So you can do three casters and one melee, which is good, or you can do two melee, two casters. So what should the MF do? Well, she should kill a few casters, so I would kill this melee, um, and then you have one, two, three, four, five, so you need to kill one more minion, and I will kill a caster as well, so you can have three casters and one melee. This is how you trim the wave. So if I'm Lucian right here, I'm spanging, spamming my, my dog, my pike. Okay, he's not a dog, he's a monster. What is, is Pike a dog? No, he's not a dog, come on. Okay, it's just a monster. So I ping him, we need to break the freeze. How do we do it? Well, we just need to get it under the tower. We try to force it a little bit, we almost died here, but we had to push it, we had to push it, and we actually eventually kind of did it, but now they still have a decent freeze. Now they only have three minions extra, and this is a cannon wave. When you have a cannon wave in general, challenger player will, will or, or sometimes tell you that they can freeze with three minions. It is true, but there are some conditions that the minions need to be full HP, uh, and it's a bit different, but if it's a cannon, cannon wave like this you need minimum four minions right because the cannon wave is a bit stronger so you need stronger minions right but you can't go wrong with this rule if someone wakes you up in the middle of the night or if someone you know stops you on the street and asks you how many minions do you need to freeze you just tell four and you're always right um you don't need to actually complicate your mind with too many lock rock of like you know very complicated things four minutes you can't go wrong easy peasy be very careful if you're trying to really freeze after the first tower is gone like right now for example we can see shen what is gonna try to do is she's gonna try to pull the minions to the left or pull the minions to the right so he can keep it here until these minions are gonna be here so uh, first of all there are many players that they make this mistake um, in solo queue it's very bad to freeze here uh, and to just keep the wave here yes you know you're gonna hear that yeah but yeah, i can deny minions i can true yeah but i can deny experience you know i have tp anyways true the problem is that in solo queue if you stay here and you're keeping the wave here your teammates are always going to fight mid and they get number disadvantage because this is what lucian is going to do it's going to go mid lane and with shen you're right here so what you should be doing instead of afking here and denying like 200 gold when your teammates are going to get aced and the enemy team is going to get nashor you should just push this wave and make sure you pressure this tower so lucian has to go back to bot lane you force him to do that do not freeze in after um like after the game in mid game after you get the bot tower it's super important it's super 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 important so be very very careful very very careful with, uh, with when you're freezing after that of course again i'm not talking about lcs lck grandmaster challenger in general even in challenger personally i think that in solo queue i wouldn't freeze after the first tower is gone and even when you're doing this i see so many mistakes that are pulling the minions and they are losing all of their hp and then they lose the lane anyways so guys if you want to pull the minions first you want to look at how many minions you have to actually get aggro and you have to look at the next incoming minion if it's close if you are adk main you're level three right or level four let's say and this is a big wave right and your next wave is very far you shouldn't be freezing because if you know you're losing like best case scenario 10 percent of hp you can think about it if the wave is like pretty close to you the incoming minion wave like here that's fine that's okay you know but if you know you're gonna lose like half of hp or 20 percent 30 percent it's so stupid to actually pull the minions to the right and freeze so for example in this case if this is like a level 4 80 carry and he has this minion wave the wave is not even close maybe if it was here you could have done it but not even though because you have to tank a lot of minions so when do you know you should pull the minions you should pull the minions every single time when you know that the amount of hp that you're gonna lose is not significant enough to give the enemies an advantage so they can actually convert it into killing you or trying to uh, have multiple like uh, to trying to have uh, a significant amount of pressure on you because of the fact that you actually got chunked of the minions so here it's very simple usually if this big wave and the wave is super far from you you should not pull the minions 
if the wave is small and the wave is pretty close to it, let's say it's right here and it's just coming, you pulling the wave a little bit is absolutely okay. And be very careful because freeze can also be very harmful. For example, if you're freezing on a lane when they are doing Drake or when your jungle is preparing to Drake, you should break the freeze intentionally unless you know you can follow him uh, while still keeping the freeze or unless he doesn't need you, which is really unlikely in solo queue. So you can also consider breaking the freeze for your jungle. Now I want to ask you a very important question about what should I be doing with the wave at this point in time. So I'm slow pushing into them and right now I knew that Danila is actually pretty close really and she has the movement speed from base. Brand I knew that is actually around bot lane and I knew that I want to go for the Rico. So what should I do right here? So theoretically you could argue that you should actually look to push here especially because we're talking about you know the wave is staying here. Um, so I want to ask you how is this specific minion wave here? Well, this minion wave is not really freezing because we have the cannon wave right here and we have the cannon wave right here and we have only three minions left, right? We don't really have four. So since the minions died under the tower, this extra uh, minions died under the tower, what I should be doing right here is what? How is the wave right now if it's not frozen? So we're talking about seven minions right here, seven minions right here, and I have three extra here. So we're talking about, we're talking about uh, 10 minions right here on the Lucian side and we're talking about 7 minions on uh, the other side right here. So this is Kakashi pushing into me. The reason why it's pushing into me is because the next minion wave is going to come from base faster um, and closer to the tower. Not faster but closer to the enemy tower and it's going to push into me. So what I should have been doing here if I was smart, so here if this is like a challenger player, he looks at this wave and he's like hey this is a bad state only if these three minions don't go in the tower. If these three minions are staying right here and they have like all of these six minions out of side of the tower, Soraka can trim the wave or Nila can trim the wave and they can make a four minions advantage freeze. Therefore, they can have a freeze. But if the tower is right now, the minions are going to be here and the tower will kill these minions, this is not a freeze. So if I recall right now, for example, let's say the tower is going to these are going to be the minions and the tower is going to kill the minions. What is going to end up happening is that this wave, okay, sure, I'm going to lose these two minions most likely, but on the next wave that is coming from base, this wave is going to push into Lucian. So if this is Lucian and he sees this, he sees these minions are going in the tower, getting auto attacks, he should immediately go and recall right here. He doesn't need to crash. Yes, you could argue that if, he, if there was four minions right here and this little minion doesn't go in the tower, um, you know, uh, he should push and he should crash, um, which is true. And then some of you can say, yeah, bro, but does it matter? Because the minion is really low anyways. Well, true, that is true. Lucian should never push here anyways. This is a very grief play. This minion is low HP, the other two died. So it's really sick. It's only three minions advantage on this wave. This is not a freeze. This is not a freeze. So here is challenge. If this was challenger, can master, master a 600 LP, like a pretty reasonable elo in a super high elo. Um, Lucian just records instantly, like no, no, no hesitation. Another important thing is what to do and when it comes to pushing and freezing, um, how do you know which one is better in specific situations? So right here, for example, I kill this guy, I push the wave, I get the plate and then right now I actually sit into the brush and I want to kill Nila again. But then I realize uh, that if Soraka doesn't come, Nila is right now in base. So since I have 1000 gold, I can just recall. This wave is pushing into me and the reason why it's pushing into me is because so this is the middle of the lane right this is the middle of the lane. and if you guys can see if this is the middle of the wave this should be our wave and this should be their wave right but we see these two casters three, three millis that are a bit on on uh, the side of Nila. this means that it's pushing into me so this if we let it like this if we leave it like this and if Soraka is bad enough to just hit the minis, most likely not, but maybe, um, this is gonna come into me and it's slow pushing into me. Potentially, potentially a freeze if they do something stupid, as in maybe hit the minis a little bit and they leave, um, or something happens on the river and they have to leave again. So let's assume that uh, they kill like one or two minions right here and this is pushing into me. Uh, how do I decide whether I should push the wave and recall uh, or uh, just recall instantly on a freeze. This is not necessarily a freeze, it's a slow push into us because of the fact that the, the, the minion is not in exactly on the mid, in the middle of the lane. So in this case, you decide based on how fast you push, based on your gold, and based on the minion wave. So right now I know that this wave is pushing into me, but I just prefer getting 1300 gold so I can get another BF sword. Of course, if the wave is coming into me and I already have the BF sword, then I will just let it 
let it into me and then I will just recall there's no reason to push if you know that um, there's no reason to screw up a slow push that is coming into you and there is no reason to actually uh, break a freeze let's say this was a freeze hypothetically we have right here uh, only three minutes you have six minutes of uh, this sort and two minutes of this of uh, red right here i would anyways break the freeze because you can argue yeah bro but you can recall on the freeze you know you can recall on the freeze and it's gonna lose minions you know yeah i don't care even if it's gonna lose minions i prefer breaking the freeze and getting another extra item because the bf sword is super good the bf sword is super good uh, it gives me power spec so if i know that by breaking the freeze i'm gonna get a significant item and i have enough power to push and i don't risk dying which well I don't right now because I knew where is the jungle. Um, you can break the freeze. Of course, it wasn't really the case, but again, this is the rule of thumb. Check your gold. Do you need to recall on a freeze? Do you need to check your gold? And if you have enough gold, you can recall on a freeze. If the wave is pushing into you and you don't know if you should push it or crush it or should you recall immediately, check your gold, check your HP and mana. Think about is it a high chance that you're gonna die by pushing by crushing the wave or uh, this most importantly do you need more gold because if you don't need more gold there is no reason to really stay and break the freeze 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 let's take a look at the situation right now so i go back to bot lane and i see that the guy on varus is freezing well no sorry he's slow pushing but he's actually a freeze for me because we have significantly more minions right here uh, i'm 3 1 he's pretty useless he's 14 minions um so we have one two three four five six seven eight minions count the minions eight minions right here and we have one two three four four minions uh so theoretically this is a good freeze okay actually missed a minion i think one two three four five six seven eight one two three four okay eight against four i just think that right now since the virus is actually hitting the minions i try to chunk him a little bit and since this wave is too big right now i queue it right because we see that um this minion is gonna die and it's gonna be one two three four five six minions extra so i can kill two minions the thing is when you freeze on a cannon it's a bit different um because the cannon is like super tanky and it also does a lot of damage so the cannon is 2.5 minions so when you count you count two, two and a half three and a half four and a half so the rest you can kill uh that's how you freeze you freeze with three minis if it's a cannon um that's how you do it you know um so right here i just try to trim the wave a little bit but then we just kill this guy and now what should we do what should we do what should we do what should we do so if i ask this ch a, a, ch a challenger player will tell me i have no freaking idea just because you can look to freeze and stay you can look to freeze and recall you can look to push the wave and crush the wave just depends so much on one thing since Lucian has HP and mana he could push this he also has pretty good um, items so he could recall as well on a freeze after streaming of course because this is too big he has to count the minis as 1 2 3 4 5 6 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 6 against 12 he needs four more minis so he needs to kill minimum two minis he needs to trim the winning wave so if if this is a challenger player he asks you hey right here if this Lucian is smart if he's gonna need let's say he wants to buy um, essence river and he needs 200 more gold uh, for the item he obviously doesn't want to stay right here and chill when he knows he has no uh, he has essence river in base by pushing this yes if he has a little bit more gold if he needs a little bit more gold for the extra item uh, and it's a huge power spec he's considering breaking the freeze why not why not if i need 200 more gold for a non quiver or if i need 200 more gold for essence river if i stay here and freeze then virus is gonna come in the lane with karma and they're gonna poke you a lot because you're gonna have like 2k gold in your inventory right so it's better to just crush the wave if you think you get a significant item by pushing that wave if you have the item let's say right now as he has a sensitive in base or he has a huge power spike in base he doesn't even need to push he can trim the wave recall immediately no problem ooga booga jiga booga super easy right and then um the other option so you can he can crush and break the freeze he can freeze and uh, recall or he can freeze and stay and that's of course when he doesn't have gold at all he has 700 gold is 700 gold because power spike not really he doesn't even have the pickaxe from the essence river right here so this is um decision is basically that he needs to stay he can't freeze and recall because he has 700 gold what is he gonna buy cloak he can't really crush the wave because he's gonna get 900 gold that's not really a huge power spike if it was for like a at least a non quiver uh, or essence saver or like a good item then sure he would do it so now 
we trim the wave with Lucian Uga Buga. But guess what? The Uga Buga Uga Buga support. Diamond 2 support by the way, he has no idea what is freezing, this is why if you're AD carry you should play some support and if you're support you should play some AD carry, so you can learn the role for them because there's so many players they just know one role, AD carry and, bo and bot lane is 50% AD carry, 50% support, so if you don't know support you're not gonna be a good AD carry, he killed the minion when it was low chip, like when it was very healthy, did you guys see that, he screwed the minions of this guy, and this is high diamond, this is like mid to high diamond, why is he doing that? Why is he doing that? And now I just freeze. Freeze, 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 and stay. Yes, of course. There are like many situations when you push that, you break that. But right now, there's no reason for me to do that. And then now, I see that uh, I intentionally break the freeze here because I don't want to have a freeze against Karma Varus in this specific case when jungle is also patting towards uh, enemy side. So what I want to do is that uh, I want to look to poke the Varus and I want to break the, the freeze. So we can do what, what we're actually seeing and witnessing right now. Easy peasy. I kill him, I just push the wave and I try to push the wave and crush it and to get the plate and then I immediately recall, easy peasy, I'm 5-1, 3.6k gold and the Draven one trick pony has 1.5k gold, useless, ooga booga, jiga booga. Okay, this is another freeze and I could try to freeze. The problem is that every single time when you freeze, you know that your teammates are gonna, if your teammates are gonna need you and if your jungle is really making an aggressive play, you really should consider helping him. So. I mean, obviously, what should you do right now? Should you trim the wave and freeze here and stay in the lane? Or should you try to intentionally walk up and try to push the minions back to them so you can actually follow? The answer is, well, both. It just depends on one thing. Because, I mean, both decisions are good. It just depends on if your jungle, one, if your jungle needs your help. And two, if, if um, he has enough damage. Well, if he has enough damage slash HP to be able to finish it in a very short period of time. There are situations where also you can freeze here but also be able to move towards the river pretty fast uh, sometimes even faster than the enemy because you're so strong so for example right here i can keep the wave here i'm so strong i'm 5-1 they are 0-3 i can literally freeze and move towards the drake ulti for them get double kill and then go back to the tower so we can get like 75 to 80 percent of the means so don't be like oh shit but i need to push because i can't follow if i have a free seat no you can follow you can follow there are many situations where you have a free seat in the tower and you can literally move to the drake um the safest option is if you see that he is doing drake um and he needs you you push the way back to them so you make sure you don't stay on a freeze while he might need your help this is for low elo but if you're high elo and you want to understand the concept this is the concept you don't need to push or freeze when he's doing drake you move your camera there it's really important to look at one the hp of viego two the hp of the drake now it's dead so i don't need to really push it i don't need to push it because i don't need to be there because he's really fine if it's a maokai with low hp that needs you there of course you should push it and you should try to move if it's a kindred that is or, or let's say a kha'zix that is doing it pretty slow but he has enough hp you can also greed a little bit just keep the wave here and if they want to move you kill them if they don't want to move uh, then uh, you should just let him solo of course again reminder and uh, if if you're sure that you can actually follow them on a freeze because there are many matchups where they are zero zero you're zero zero and if you have the freeze you literally can't move but if you're five zero and you're ahead you can literally freeze here and also be able to move so this thinking like oh, i need to push because he's doing drag this is just low elo players or people that don't really understand the the deep deep idea about um like in detail about the game they know some fundamentals but they don't really know the details of the game so right here it's very simple i look at the drake if i'm not sure should i freeze should i trim the wave should i push it well i look at the drake he doesn't need me so i don't need to do help him so i do i trim the wave and i freeze if he needed the help then i just i push the wave um or if he's doing it he has enough damage he has enough hp but he's pretty slow then i would still freeze but get ready to to move there because i'm strong and if i wasn't strong then uh, i wouldn't be looking to freeze because i know that if i wasn't strong i can't move on the river um really i can't move on the river at all if they actually move it first um then of course if i wasn't strong then i would push the way back into them anyways so every time when you freeze, you need to also take a look at your jungle and see what he wants to do. Same thing applies with the slow push. You want to look to his pathing as well. Um, when you're looking to slow push two, three waves in case he's pathing towards you. 
uh, where or when you want to crash you want to synchronize the crash with your jungle actually trying to potentially dive for example or other concepts that are complex this is again for high elo for low elo is not really going to be too applicable because your jungle is probably not really going to do the right thing it's not really going to play around the dive that you should dive so these concepts are smart i'll tell you that i know them you know i use them um it's just it's not really gonna help you if you're really below diamond 4 uh, maybe it's gonna help you after 200 lp well probably it's gonna make the difference if you know them or not after 200 lp uh, but yeah not sure how many people are like watching this and that are like grandmaster or 300 lp now we're gonna talk about recoil timing guys i'm gonna show you five situations and i'm actually gonna quiz you i'm gonna ask you i'm gonna test you if you have good recall timings or not we're actually gonna look a little bit of five different situations five interesting recalls just so you can actually apply what we learned really in the theory and see if you actually know the answers we play Varus with brand against uh, the new champion and the sauna we want to look to po poke them so we need to get a bit of priority on the laney phase so the most important thing is to poke them to hit our skill shots and to look to slow push this is what we did really we just look to slow push we don't really want to push too hard i just want to poke and that is easy peasy i go for a word right now and we keep poking 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 which is really good the problem is that we're getting ganked very soon and it didn't work for that so right now we are going to die very soon of course we pushed right here we poke them as much as possible we just forgot to actually work this brush uh, even though me and brand we have actually three words up here so let's take a look he dies and my question is what should the smaller do well first of all he's low hp he can't stay in the laning phase he has 700 gold so he has only two options option number one just push and recall um, but since the next wave right now is pretty close it's like right here if he's gonna push now this wave this this wave that he's actually pushing is gonna meet here so he's not gonna be able to crush in time so then what he should be doing here is that he should wait like five seconds so this wave can actually come here slow push a little bit like only last hitting and then after that he should fast push or simply just ask the jungle to just help him push which is kind of bad because well you can push without the jungle since he saw this in top lane a while ago so he doesn't really he's not really too scared of dying here so this is what he should do right and this is what he's doing but why am i asking you this i'm asking you this because i also want to ask you what should varus do here okay so this right here he died and i he flashed away right he's recalling and as he's recalling of course his camera should be on the smolder the thing is right now varus is pretty low but they're also very low we know that Smolder has a lot of wave clear with his W and in general the champion is doesn't have a bad wave clear at all. So right now he's just gonna push very hard and Varus is gonna lose most of the minions. So what was the mistake? Very simple. If you know you're gonna play against a champion that doesn't really have too much wave clear and you're recalling right here. Um, let's say you recall here against a Twitch. That's good because you know that the Twitch is gonna have a very hard time pushing this wave especially if he doesn't have mana or if he doesn't have a lot of items like only with Doran's blade like a champion without wave clear Varus should recall here but if this is Caitlyn, Smolder, Sivir or any other very fast push AD carry then he should consider staying wait coach so you're telling me that he should stay with low HP absolutely yeah all what he had to do he has to go around for a word and then when this wave is going to go in the tower of course smaller is not going to be crazy in the head to hit the tower here because he's also low hp so varus should take the minions first and then the waves are going to be in the middle and then he should recall of course he's not going to afford pushing one more wave but this is the correct decision making by varus here as he's recalling he should pay the camera pay, pay attention on the smolder right now he has only this minion and the next wave to push if he was the champion with extremely bad wave clear he can recall and come back in time in the lane but since you play against smolder which is one of the best wave clear in the game at the moment you should consider staying if the chances of you dying is uh, not high which it is even though he's low evelyn just left the chances of evelyn staying here is very low because well of course who would expect Varus to stay here so they will push here and of course they will back off and Varus right now should be right here onto the wave take the wave and then just recall right away the next recall guys is this one let's take a little bit of a context Varus lethality with karma bubble comet lane against senna and seraphim get the prior early on push a little bit don't leash and try to poke them that's basically the win condition here we try to look to poke them it's pretty good 
and what we're doing right now is well we're just bullying them we're just trying to zone them we do not push i just zone i just last it and then we go for a word of course as per usual very soon and then we keep pushing 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 because that's basically the matchup and then of course uh right here i try to look q he actually dies here she forgot to heal here and then what should varus do he should recall right right now he's actually staying the karma is going for the uh for this fight what should varus do right now the thing is this wave is slow pushing into him right uh so he could have recalled already the thing is he's thinking probably for to get the dirk so he wants to get 144 gold right because if he pushes this wave he's gonna get around 100 wave 100 gold and in the meantime of course he's gonna get like 30 gold just because you know over time gold so he's trying to pushing to push this wave because he knows that he has dirk in base if he pushes this and he knows that it's not really a high chance that he dies here of course if he had dirk already uh, right now he would get the kill and he would immediately recall because one he can't get the plate two the wave is quite tanky for a level two varus with only blade uh, and three uh, karma needs to urgently move towards the this so karma can't really help him so the reason why he stays is because he wants to get dirk that's why he stays here but unfortunately the senna is very good here and she's trying to poke she's trying to walk up so what varus does is that he kills three minions he tries his best to kill that and right now he actually has the dirk he has 953 in base when he's gonna recall he's gonna have 970 and he can wait like 30 gold it's like the maximum that i would recommend you to wait 25 30 gold maximum and this wave is still pushing into senna into varus what do you think one two three minions against one two three four five minions what do you think you should know that right right by now it's two minions differential right here so theoretically it's pushing into the senna but practically when the next wave is going to come here it's going to push into varus so varus recall here is clean so clean 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 why it's because wave is coming into him and he's got his birth his dirk so why would he not be happy here why wouldn't he be happy here super good super good recall so all what he did here is that he killed he killed the front minions to get a dirk and wave is coming into him so he doesn't need to push it all the way in right easy peasy easy peasy if this is five minions and this is three minions how should the wave be like if you could if you could change the numbers in order for this wave to be frozen do you know so if we say that the freeze lane is with the four extra minions on the enemy wave, if they have three, my wave, the Varus wave, should have eight minions. Mm, well, sorry, seven minions, minimum. <laughs> eight minions is also fine, but he should need, they need to trim. So if the, there are there is one red minion here into the Varus wave, it should be five. If there is two minions in the Varus wave, it should be six. So four more minions. If the difference was like six against two, this is frozen here and Varus has to stay to greed to push this. Even if he dies and he's, he's, he's breaking the wave, it could be worth in some situation, not in this situation at the moment. So that's basically the concept here. Let's go for three more situations of recall timings. Let's see the next recall. Do you know how to answer this? So we have Varus right here in the lane, 570 gold, decent mana, uh, full HP, and we have set up him right now that she just recalled she has only 200 gold so they both say in the laney phase easy peasy uh varus is trying to really poke and right now they are forcing the cleanse just because uh they're actually making a play top lane with the karma here so varus is 1v2 easy peasy right so let's take a look at this so they are pushing what should set up him do she should stay and she should poke of course she should not recall what should Varus do? Dodge like a psycho here, like a scripter, and try to get as many minions as possible from under the tower. Like, look at, look at the cleanness, bro. <laughs> Pretty clean. Okay, what should Varus do? Well, he should stay because he's gonna be, he's, they are gonna keep pushing and pushing and pushing and pushing. He's poking Senna, so he makes sure that he's not gonna be diveable uh, in case Karma wasn't really here. And right now, what is he doing? He's taking the wave. He could recall immediately right now, but he actually chose to not to, even though he has 1100 gold. The reason why he actually chose to push the wave before recalling um, is because he has enough power to push with Karma Q and with um, the Varus Q. So this is why he actually stayed here and pushed one more wave. Another player will say, yeah, coach, but what if he recalls it instantly? Isn't it good? Well, we need to ask ourselves, 
are they able to really push the wave in time? If Faros presses B right now, the wave is not even in the lane. In the lane. So by the time that the wave is going to be in the middle, Varus is going to be in base. And after they push it, Varus is probably going to get it in time, as long as they don't have so much wave clear, which they don't, because the Seraphim Senna don't really have so much wave clear at the moment. In general, they have some, but with the Amplified Tone and without the Lost Chapter, they don't have so much. So if Varus knows that they can't push it in time, he can even recall right away because he's pretty low on mana. He also has a lot of gold. So, uh, of course, if he recalls and the wave is in the middle already pushed here, the position of this wave is in the middle, then he's going to be like, oh shit, maybe I should stay because they already started pushing. So maybe I should stay, which is true. But if he presses B right now, the wave is pretty far. So uh, he could have time, especially because right now we're talking about a recall on a cannon, which is preferable, not a must, but preferable here. Of course, if he recalls, instantly it's a cannon wave they will never be able to push it and Varus is going to be in time in the lane either ways even if it's not a cannon he would still it, it would still be okay to recall for him he has 1100 gold so he probably has uh want to get a 1300 gold um otherwise i don't really see why he stayed here no reason to really stay here uh so he actually stays and he tries to push he knew that he's pretty strong and uh, yeah that was a pretty good uh Pretty good push, pretty fast, but it wasn't the correct move. It wasn't the correct move. He could have just recalled it, especially because it's on a cannon wave, but even if it wasn't on a cannon wave, because he knew that these two people, they don't have so much wave clear, he has enough gold, so why just stay? Just to stay? But do you get any item if you stay? No. Okay, then why you stay? It doesn't make any sense, right? Let's take a little bit of a look also on the later stages recalls right here, as it's pretty important concept to actually pay attention to how much gold you need for an item and see what are the options on the map. So right now, Lucian is going mid lane, obviously, because he got the bot tower, Rumble is bot lane. He is trying to stay there a little bit for a while. He's getting a bit of chunked, but he's going to stay there. He will get a bit of caught here, but he is going to be pretty safe. He escapes right here and then he obviously wants to recall. The thing is he has only 611 gold. He knows he needs 1000 and around 1300 for his um, item, the quick blade, the Navori. He sees the top lane wave and immediately goes for there. Of course, he shouldn't really recall if he's losing the wave. As he's really losing the wave right now, he sees that he tries to, to see like his teammates are mid lane. He could recall right away, but with 700 gold, what can you buy? You can just ref sell the refillable potion and, well, maybe get a cloak, but it's not really too good. He pushes the waves super, super fast, and then right now he presses B. The thing is, he, he sees that the bot lane are fighting, and they already died there, and there is not really any objective free that is going to be here soon. So then he decides that if he's going to need 300 gold, he is going to stay. He already knew who can be here and it was singed and he all saw all of the other people here. He pushed and right now he actually decides to actually stay a little bit more because he needs 250 gold. He, this is safe. If it wasn't safe, he wouldn't really stay. And if it was too long, like let's say uh, he would have right now 800 gold, uh, he would probably not stay for 1300 gold. But since he's right now, he has a thousand gold and he's just 275 gold away from the item. He is just staying a little bit more. So right now he needs basically 100 gold, I think. He's going on mid lane, tries to go on this Jin. This Jin is actually beautifully actually using the, um, the Yomus. He pushes the wave, he dodges beautifully <laughs> the Jin uh, right here. This guy was actually a pretty good player. He has 86% win rate in Diamond 3, so he's a pretty good player. Uh, he probably predicted. Uh, the guy so now lucian is actually going to push this wave because it's in front of him even though he has the item in base it's the wave is in front of him so he can just push it and then he just actually goes to stop lane right because he wants to just defend here so he could have recalled but he sees that the kiana and the silas they're both coming so he actually went to kill this guy unfortunately he this is pretty unlucky he just got cancelled if he didn't really get cancelled uh, he would obviously not die here and he would get the wave top then he recalls then go mid the thing is even after this play he still has navori so it's not a, it's not so bad as it could have been just because it, he was smart enough to pay attention to how much gold he needs he was smart enough to assess the risks of him hey can i get the crux or is it unrealistic how much gold do i need well i only need 200 gold okay i can stay if he would have need maybe 
right here after pushing the last wave if you would have need maybe 500 or even 400 gold he would probably be like no i'm gonna recall and go mid but if you need maximum 250 200 gold you can stay and the reason why it's 250 it's because 250 is exactly two waves one cannon wave and one normal wave so that's how you decide based on how much how likely is it for you to die here and how much gold do you really need to get your item the next recall is a later stages recall that i see a lot of players do it especially on other roles but also on air carry so let's take a look so lucian 332 kraken slayer almost second item uh, completed he goes to mid lane uh, he is not weak he's level 11 he just goes to mid lane he goes to mid lane he does something here just takes the the farm and let's see what he's gonna do right here Takes the farm, easy peasy, takes the tower, and right now they're actually going to engage on him. He's pretty confident as he's playing with Melio, and he goes for a lot of poke. Um, let's see what he's going to do right here. Yasuo goes on him, and he kills the guy. What is Lucian going to do right now? Well, he does have his Navori in base, so he could just immediately recall. The problem is that he sees that the red buff is expiring, so he just takes it, and then he actually keeps staying. What, what, what's the reason why he's st still staying here? Well, first of all, the tower mid lane is low, and they killed Yasuo. The chances of them fighting here is pretty high. Milio has ulti and uh, shield, and Lucian knows for sure that if the enemy team goes on him, he can e EOA, and even if he dies and he baits all of the team, all of the enemy team go into his teammates, his teammates anyways have number advantage as Yasuo already died. So he's actually staying here because he, all of his team is pushing. He's also staying to be pushing with them. He's staying with them, he's hovering them and he actually makes good work because right now Vi is going on, on the Corki and Lucian does good, good, good damage here to kill him. So Lucian did not recall, no, because all of his teammates, they were actually pushing mid lane. And right now we can see that this is pretty good. He also gets another kill easy peasy and then now lucian recalls he gets his navori avori avori and then he just plays with his teammates right now of course in the mid game you want to stay with your teammates and you want to do as much damage as possible so that's why he is staying here and this is actually the second thing that we're gonna talk today mid game macro let's take a look at this right now we're gonna talk about mid game macro guys so let's take a look when to group when to rotate, when to stay with your teammates, when to stay on the sideline. Very simple. It will depend on first of all, should you group mid lane? This is the this is the this is the question. When should you group mid lane? In general, you want to look to group mid lane after the first tower is gone. So you got it, you can group mid lane. You didn't get it, you want to work yourself to get it. Of course, if you can't get it and the enemy decay actually grouped and you see that your teammates uh, they are fighting or simply your mid laner really wants to go bot lane you can let him but as a rule of thumb if you take the bot tower first before actually grouping mid lane that's usually what you should prefer to do because of course you get a lot of access if you push bot lane you'll push it in the second tower and in case they push back to you you have so much time to go back to the lane and to the wave if it's needed so this is why you want to get the tower first it also gets a lot of gives you a lot of gold so when you group on mid lane you're significantly stronger than any mid lane but this is the first thing that you should do when grouping mid lane second thing is that you should look at your items if you have low items like usually be low one item and a half it's not recommended to group because it, obviously it will also depend on the enemy mid lane item so if the syndra has for let's say uh ludens and you go mid lane with only essence river you're gonna be in trouble so you need minimum an item and a half and we don't count boots an item and a half means essence river with zeal essence river warhammer or essence river like or on ezreal you know warhammer with essence river again uh, or on varus um let's say you get uh, yomus and uh, the war hammer as well like an item and a half sure some people will say to you two two item is great but it's just unrealistic to, to think that every single time you're gonna get two items um before a group mid lane so an item and a half is the minimum get the bot tower first if it's possible of course you can also group mid lane if you're like 10 0 your z is mid lane and it's pinging you to go he wants to go be bot lane you can also group before that but it's preferable for you to get the the first tower it's preferable for you to group the uh, after the one item and a half is completed so right now i got a tower i can recall and i can go mid lane easy peasy right the reason why i stayed here is because i need a little bit for the for the item i need 200 gold there's no reason to recall here i'm paying attention to my mid lane as well to the herald 
and I'm just going to go mid lane. So this is why I play it the way I play it right here. Easy peasy. This guy is actually going in on me. And I'm actually staying with my teammates. And uh, this is a good rotation because I got the bot tower. Uh, I baited the Nocturne to go in. I flashed out. We killed him. Easy peasy. So this was a one fight. And what does Molder do? Enemy AD carry. He, well, he was just on the bottom side. Well, even though he's playing top lane right now, with smolder the fact that i pushed away bot lane i got the tower forced him to be there so he couldn't really be in the team fight and we also get the top lane tower so this is all all what i created with the uh, lucian right here where should i be going right now should i farm should i what, what should i do you know well let's take a look so what should you take into consideration when you decide between side lane in mid game and um, so you farm on the side lane or you just stay in the team fights. First of all, you want to be in a team fights as an indicator to have an impact. But if you have little amount of items, you can't be in a team fights because you're going to be useless. So right now we have an item and a half on AD carry and item and a half on the other AD carry. So both AD carries should be looking to preferably group, but obviously, uh, taking the side lane is also important because you don't want to give up all of the farm. The later the game goes the more useless the farm becomes but at the moment it's 16 minutes in the game it's slowly approaching in the mid game so farm is quite important so right now what should should the uh, lucian do well he has a wave on bot lane right now but obviously when you play uh, this role you need to think about in mid game about waves position and objectives so right now first of all uh, the bot lane wave is pretty far it's not really pushed into his tower or into his second tower and it's not really it's pushing into him because there is one two three four five six seven eight minions against one two three four five so it's pushing into him but it's slowly pushing into him so what he's gonna do and the correct play is going to mid lane there is no reason to go to bot lane unless this wave is pressuring him in any way yes i agree with you if you say yeah bro coach but what if it was here and it's about to go into the tower and he knows that he can get there in time yes if it's a big wave he should go to bot lane if he thinks he can get it in time same thing in the second tower if they group mid lane but they have a huge wave right here you can go there but don't go bot lane if you're if all pushed here pushed here pushing into you that slowly and your team needs you and you have minimum one item and health that's stupid you don't want to be the afk farm guy so you go mid easy peasy and of course right now lucian can just take the wolves and he can just go back to bot lane like he doesn't need to stay mid you know but the fact that he actually puts towards mid if they're crazy in their heads and they fight without him he can be there he can kill them he can hover or if not like in this case he can always repat towards bot lane so it's not like oh but what do i do in mid game do i group or do i farm you adapt it on the game you adapt it on the situation you adapt it on what is happening so in that case he had to go to mid lane because the way was pretty pushed and then since the wave was actually coming into him and it was pressuring him when he was doing wolves he said like oh shit it's coming into me i'm going to catch it of course in the same situation if this is like a 30 minutes game and he has three items and a half like a lot more items and 30 minutes game means the farm becomes more and more useless and the, the people were actually grouping to objectives like baron and they were getting vision he should also consider avoiding getting this wave because he knows that his teammates might die but in this specific case first of all the minute of the game is just 16 so right now really the farm is quite important second of all there is already a big objectives on the map that he's gonna lose it so fighting right now is not really big of a deal so he goes and takes the wave what is he gonna do after taking the wave he's thinking about going mid lane of course but since he has his Navorin base he recalls and then he immediately goes to mid lane there's no reason to go top lane since when is pushing no reason to go bot lane since it's mid game and he wants to uh, fight with the people so easy peasy same thing right here right where should lucian go definitely not on top lane because the wave is fully pushed in mid lane pushed in bot lane well it's one two three four five six seven minions again one two three four it doesn't even matter really because this wave is actually going to stay here for a while because the difference between the minions is very insignificant but his teammates are fighting so he should not go bot lane he should not side lane right now because he might have a chance to actually save this maokai so he this is why he was petting right there and this is why he actually did that and right now he's actually going to get kills here with twisted fate so very important do not try to get the side lane waves if they're not pressuring you if your teammates are fighting mid here 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 or there on the not sure or there right here and your wave is in the middle or your wave is pretty insignificant 
uh, then don't go to take the wave. If your wave is huge into the second tower or even huge into this tower, obviously you can consider pathing towards both lane. It will also depend on how many items you have because if you have four items, three items and a half, even three items, the waves become a lot more useless than if you have an item and a half. You know, you want to play for minimum two items, preferably. Uh, uh, if it's if it's possible uh, but obviously in this case he has two items and he knows the wave is actually well now he's pushing into them so why would he prioritize to go bot lane here doesn't really make sense he just goes to mid lane and he just tries to stay to make a play right now then he goes back to bot to mid lane kills the guy recalls and then of course right now what is he gonna do 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 this is a very hard question why he should go bot lane, of course, because this is, this is a wave that is pretty big, as you can see. Well, actually, it's not big. Is it big? Is it big, though? Okay, he recalls. Okay, he has a bunch of minions right here. And there are going to be another wave here. So it has like five minions here. There's one more fog of war. And six minions, 11 minions. It's quite a big of a wave right here. So he could definitely consider to go bot lane right now. Absolutely absolutely he could go bot lane why is he not going bot lane what the heck it's very simple because he keeps up the wave intentionally because of the fact that the people are doing natural you don't want to be the guy that has eight farm per minute like oh, okay i want to get the farm and then your teammates are going to fight there they're going to lose it and they're going to ping you the whole game and flame you no, if they are starting the Nashor, of course, if the Nashor was like this HP or this HP, like 2k HP or something, or everyone is dead that, you know, they can never contest, then he would repat here. The reason why he's patting here is because he's probably thinking that the far is going to probably uh, try to flank or flash on them, or they probably think that Smolder has TP behind right here. So he was like, hey, I'm going to make sure I'm going to be with my teammates in case they fight. So we are going to have this Nashor. Yes. I need to pay this wave. I need to pay this wave as an insurance that I'm going to get the Nashor. But what else can I do? Go on bot lane and pray for the best, but then the enemy team gets Nashor, maybe. So I'm not going to take the risk and I'm going to go directly there. Of course, that you could say that, yeah, bro, but you know, it's Nocturne, it's Kaisa, it's Pike. What if the Nafari was also dead? Should he go there? Not really. If he knows that uh, his teammates are actually finishing it uh, the, before he can get there or simply... Um, he doesn't need to be there he would probably push two waves here on both lane then he would go to mid lane immediately with his teammates but in this specific case he had to hover and yes if they weren't really doing the natural he should have gone both lane obviously and right now he should stay mid lane he should and he of course we don't even talk about top lane he didn't really go top lane so you gotta be very careful in the mid game when you're farming too much we're gonna we're gonna study a few situations where the guy actually farmed too much on the sideline let's learn so let's see another situation first we get the tower on bot lane of course so we're not really gonna pay attention to this fight so the lucian is going to try to get the tower he gets kills he gets the tower and right now he can recall go mid or he can just go mid right away since he doesn't really have too much hp he's gonna choose to recall he's going mid lane and his mid laner is there the wave was right here you guys can see on the minimap right now so there is no reason for him to go back to bot lane and his way is mid lane so what he should be doing is that he should be going towards mid lane ping the way ping bot lane ping the way ping bot lane and should type please go bot lane of course if she does say no because there is a chance that she says no what he should do personally i would stay mid i would stay mid for one wave and if i see that the second wave is coming um and way doesn't go i would go bot lane right you don't want to keep staying on mid lane and sharing the experience but at the same time you want to try to let her to go bot lane uh, and kind of force her to go bot lane uh, so it's either you stay for with one way for one wave with her and on the second wave if she doesn't want it you go bot or you simply if you see that mf is about to push the wave or the wave is right here mf is pushing you just go bot lane and you don't even wait the second wave uh, but of course you need to tell her and you need to ping her and sometimes you need to even type please go bot and of course don't worry if you shouldn't really tilt if she, they say no because they have a point like she has ludens she's 5-1 she's strong yes the point is hey but lucian is stronger than you he should be mid lane anyways and you have tp which is true but um her staying mid lane with way with zerat with stuff like that champions like this um 
it's fine. It's not really a problem, right? It's it's okay. So this is what I do. I commit, I ping him, and right now what we see is that the karma is here. Obviously, in a normal case where I'm mid lane here and karma is not here, I see MF pushing. I will most likely just go back to bot because I don't want to lose this wave since there is not really a huge objective here. If it was a, a bad on Nasha right now and we can start it or we can start a big fight and we had all of our teammates around, I will probably not even care about the bot wave. But in this case, um, I see the karma. So I'm just going to go in here. We try to kill her. And then right now, since I'm already here, I can't go back to bot. So MF should be pushing here for sure. She should be taking the tower. Um, so I'm actually staying with my teammates. We have big number advantage here. So this is good that I'm staying with them. And what I'm going to do is that I'm going to stay mid lane. And I'm going to keep pushing. I'm like, hey, you want to get the bot tower? No problem. I'm going to get the mid tower. Of course, in a normal situation, you should probably go back to bot if you don't have a play like this one, Karma. Um, or in normal situations, if it's like a really late game, like 25 minutes and MF is going bot lane, you should just go and try to fight with your teammates, not just staying on the side lane like her. Now I have two items here. I'm pushing mid lane. And of course, the MF try to come here. They try to free flash on me. I easy peasy killed her. I heal very early because she's going to ulti on me very, very soon. And then I yell out and she dies. And this is the mid game macro, right? I adapt. As I go to mid lane, I tell way to go to go to bot lane and if she doesn't want to go bot lane i already have a plan i see mf pushing right here so if right now i see mf pushing here and karma is not face checking i will immediately go bot lane right that's what i would do easy peasy but if Kohei is gonna go if she wants to do that if she wants to go there then i don't mind it's actually better if she goes there my question is where should Lucian go after this? Because he's recalling right now, he's low HP, and right now we can see that the Jax is pushing here. It's not loose, he's going in. He is going both lane. Why? It's because the wave was relatively big and the wave was actually close to his second tower. So what he does is that he's fixing the wave and then right now he could either go mid lane or he can push more since he doesn't really see anyone really mid lane pressuring or doing anything. He actually chooses to push on more. Of course, in another situation, he could also go mid lane after he pushes that. So he decides to push one more. And after he pushes one more, guess what? They start, start fighting. So he's going to try to join. He's going to try to be there. And then actually is going to try to be there. And he is with his teammates. Another mistake that people do a lot on ADK is that they stay too much on the side lane. You want to be able to stay with your teammates, especially when you have your power spike. And you want to be able to also get the bot lane farm if it's pushing into you or if it's in the second tower or if it's a huge wave and you can get it. That doesn't mean you get every single wave because there are situations where you're going towards mid and when you have to go bot because let's say MF is pushing, you see a big fight happen on mid lane and you want to be there. And instead of getting the bot wave you are actually intentionally um, staying mid lane to win the fight that's fine but you should be looking to get as many waves as possible as fast as possible and uh, also be with your teammates now Lucian goes to the Baron the Baron is up right here bot lane is so stupid to go bot lane here top lane is so stupid to go top here so he just stays with his teammates so this is what he's gonna do right now and he's gonna stay with his teammates he's not gonna afk farming He's not going to do anything crazy. He's going to hover them. Now he sees a wave on top lane. The play is dead on the with, with his teammates. So he just tries to farm as much as possible. Right now he goes top lane. He gets another wave. Two waves because he has rapid fire cannon. And after he gets it, he goes to mid lane. Of course, remember that he would never push this wave if he knows that he doesn't have his rapid fire cannon. If he pushes this wave and he doesn't get his rapid fire cannon, that's garbage. That's fucking bad. The reason why I say it's fucking bad is because right now his teammates are on the map and right now his teammates are going to fight. So if he takes the wave and he doesn't have a significant item in base, there is no reason for him to do that because now his teammates are going to fight and if they fight now and he's not there, when he could have just not pushed the wave and be there. That's obviously a bad decision. So if you can get a, an item, a good item, a good power spike, not like a dagger, by pushing one more wave or pushing two more waves, you should do it. But if you know that by getting these waves, you're not really going to get anything, do not push it. It's stupid. It doesn't really make any sense. So now he does it, but he does it because he had his rapid fire cannon in base. Now we're actually going to analyze different situations from a challenger player in this specific case to see how you actually can play mid game and how when you can actually move out of the early game. 
um, so in the early game or early to mid game there are some rotations that you can do we see this draven right now is playing draven he's pushing the wave and right now he immediately just turns to the brush he wants to get some vision but then he sees that renata is sweeping he knows that he can't really get the plates he doesn't really have enough gold to recall so what can he do he is going towards mid lane to actually just get the scuttle and as you see uh, he's finding a kill right now so what a coincidence he takes the kill and after he takes the kill he wants to take the scuttle and after that he wants to uh return to bot lane you guys can see how he actually kind of played mid lane now he's leaving the drake he's just taking the wave bot lane because he knows that the drake is actually done and now he's actually baiting intentionally he just wants to get hooked in this case because he knows he has cleanse so he can easily play this uh very very aggressively He's gonna take the skills and let's see how he plays next he takes the skills he dies right now what i want to show you is the following aspect this guy has a tendency to go mid lane after he pushes the wave we see that he's crushing here and he sees a big fight onto the onto the mid lane the reason why he's actually going mid lane right now and he's not pushing is because one he knows that the cartus should be here pretty soon um or if the cartus is not here soon someone is here soon um uh, cartus was actually in top lane uh, the thing is he knew that someone will actually catch this wave on bot lane if Kartus is top lane most likely twisted fate yeah exactly so he doesn't even bother to actually stay he could have stayed for this plate but the thing is when he sees that Arela is fighting in a big fight mid lane he immediately goes there he can easily do that because he just pushed uh, one wave into the tower he goes mid he does uga booga things mid he's also paying attention to the bot wave so by now he could actually return to bot lane but he's pinging oriana to do it since he knows that oriana has tp in like what three minutes two minutes and a half one minute and a half now so he sends oriana there of course if you are in solo queue and you're mid lane you're making this rotation and you see twisted fate is pushing and you see that after you ping oriana to go back to bot she doesn't want it then you should do it of course you should do it absolutely but we can see that this guy is staying mid and as he's staying mid he's pushing really easy He's taking the tower and right now he's pushing one more and as he's pushing he's actually hovering his teammates as they are, they are invading he has he needs a little bit more goal like 200 more goal for collector so he has no problem to follow this he's going towards top lane he's going towards bot lane this is challenger elves this is actually rank three i think something like this um so super good player he's so active and you guys will see a lot of players like an afk let me farm let me farm and sure i don't i don't want to say farm is not important on any carry but as you guys can see in order for you to do damage in order for you to get kills you need to um you need to be in the fights and i'm not saying okay now what should i do should i ignore the farm no i'm not saying you should ignore the farm like right now for example he just goes mid lane there's no reason to go bot lane because the wave is super pushed in so he just wants to get the farm and he also wants to be in the team fight so don't fail like don't just afk farm but at the same time don't always be in team fights you kind of have to make a balance like get as much farm as you can and while you're doing that you also have to consider staying with your teammates so this is basically the concept as you guys can see this draven is doing he's always hovering place he's always pushing mid but he's never actually afraid to follow his team he's actually pushing this and he's actually hovering the top lane in case they make a play then they can see that mid lane he can push easy peasy so he the word is being active while still farming that's the the place that he has no he's not having afk farm only the inside lane no he's not following every single fight but he's getting ready he's getting in position mid game macro rotation where should draven go right here bot lane is pushed in top lane is pushed in but mid lane is coming into him the thing is he should always go mid lane unless there is something that is happening urgently onto the drake right now they just engaged so what he's doing right now is he's seeing that this is still doable he's actually going towards the fight of course if he's looking and everyone is dead or almost dead or about to die in a very short period of time three to five seconds and he knows that he can't get there in time he wouldn't really pat here he would go mid lane take the wave and potentially just pat top lane towards Krugs. but since he saw that that as he was in base he moved this camera he saw that they're buying time he saw that they, it's do doable he was actually moving towards the fight again another thing that adk did just default into getting the farm when all of the teammates are fighting of course again if he knew that trying to get there is pointless and he wouldn't be able to get there in time or his teammates are dead anyways then he wouldn't go but in this case it was a good decision and the decision has to be made now right now do I go mid lane or do I go in the fight? Well, let's see the fight. 
he's surviving he's most likely surviving for minimum 10 seconds i mean in the worst case scenario where they flash on him even is still safe she uh she's in a safe position so he's moving there of course if something is the fight looks like this and they are very low very chunk they are dead, they're already dead or simply this is a two versus five fight he'd probably just go mid lane and potentially even just go for the national vision but in this specific case it was a no-brainer they are fighting they're in a fight they're inside of a fight it's urgent let me just move and as he was moving, of course, he was also hovering and looking with his camera there to see if the fight is still going good because maybe you decide to go here when the fight looks good, but maybe here the fight is completely shit, so you can recalibrate your decision and just go to the mid lane. Another situation, where should Draven go right now? Bot lane is pushed in, top lane is pushed in, is the later stages, and mid lane is pushed in as well. Obviously, since he doesn't really have waves, he's just going towards two. Uh, going to go towards to the Nashor. Then he actually just wants to get the wave mid lane, but he sees that he can't reface your kid in case Nautilus is actually gonna flank him. So what he does is even when he's pinking, he's trying to hover top lane a little bit with display and go top lane. But then he actually got uh, to see the Nautilus here. And then right here he was like, okay, I'm not gonna go top lane. Evelyn is fine. I'm just gonna push mid lane. What should he do after pushing mid lane? Of course, he should go towards top lane and hover, 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 hover. Whether he's going to get there in time or not, he should be with his teammates. And after that, he's just going to get Baron Nashor. Easy peasy. And then he's going to go mid lane. He tries to kill the guy. Unfortunately, the Cartus ulti kills him. This is how you really play the mid game. You're farming, but you're also inside of the fights. You're hovering place. You're paying attention to the top 10 bot. After you push mid lane, you're always playing with the jungle or with um the support depending on who is the most aggressive on the map this is how you play the carry you are inside of a fight and every time when you have like nine farm per minute eight farm per minute and your bronze silver gold emerald even di low diamond or even high diamond and you have low damage that means you're not really fighting enough now again as i'm saying you have to make the balance between fighting too much and fighting too little because there are many situations where you're just farming too much um but there are also situations where you just grouping 24 7 which is also a bad thing so you really gotta make the right balance and usually uh, you can do that by looking at your damage so your damage on your match history should look like the following here is how you can see whether you're doing them more damage or too much damage or too little damage and you're farming too much or not so first of all you look at the cs number cs number is actually very very good but it doesn't really show you anything if you're actually looking only at cs number so this is a challenger player again rank 3 over 7 farm 6.7 7.4 6.3 you might say wait he's not challenger i know he's challenger he's actually inside of a fight and he's playing smart so when he's actually we're actually going to open his damage he will do 18k damage in 20 minutes that's pretty good in a 20 minutes game to do uh, almost 1k damage per minute that's actually quite good second game he lost 39k damage he did 36k damage in 39 minutes which is actually quite okay um, of course you also have to consider uh, because my some of you might be like oh no but you know of course this is little damage but you have to consider the composition that he has whether he has engaged or not you have to see the matchup it, like, you can't just look at the damage and the farm and just say yes I know but I'm just saying below master tier how other players can actually check the stats um, that's usually the rule of thumb look 39 minutes 36k damage that's pretty good you can also argue that yeah he's plays against tam kenj senna which is very difficult to play uh gwen he doesn't really have um very good peeling he has shake which is quite useless in here uh, overall even though he's ahead uh which is true 29 minutes game 35k damage again 6.7 farm again 7.4 farm and then 31k damage in 30 minutes that's pretty good that is pretty good and now let me just show you one example of what to not do, let's say. So I'm going to open up an OPGG here in front of you. And we're actually going to see a player that is a little bit lower rank, right? And we're going to see his form. Look at this. Look at this. 7, 4, 5, 9, 7, 2, 7, 3, 8, farm, 6, 7, 6, 6, 7, 1. This doesn't look bad, right? It's very, very similar with the 9.6. When you see 9.6 and this guy is platinum i'm like okay is the is 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 it good well if i'm gonna open the damage and he's gonna do less than 35k damage that most likely means he ignored his teammates he ignored his teammates completely and he wasn't refollowing 35k damage okay that's exactly the minimum that he should do true but in a game like he did he has 14 kills 35k damage and he did as much as 
eight seven top lane, five eleven jungle. Okay, he did ten k more, but that's too little. Look, the Pantheon does four seven. It is twenty five k damage, and he only did thirty five. That's not good. That is not good. That is not good. That is not good. So when you see you have a high farm, check your damage. If your damage is low, look at this five point nine. And he did 28k damage. Yeah, this is definitely so. If you also have a low farm and you have a low damage, this means there are other fundamental errors. Maybe you don't know how to team fight. Maybe you're simply you're not comfortable with the champion, or maybe you pick the champion just in a wrong situation. So that's basically <laughs> these are like the situations. But that, that's how you check it. Every time when you look at your damage, don't just look at your damage. Look at your farm as well. Many players they have a really high farm and low damage so what they should do instead of having nine farm per minute in bronze nine okay or emerald or whatever and having like 10k damage whatever you can have seven farm per minute and 35k damage much better much better it's like an optimization you don't want to be the player that has four farm per minute and 50k damage but you don't want to be the player that has 10 farm per minute and 5k damage you know uh, you want to kind of make a balance balance if that makes sense Another situation right here of a challenger player that this is something that it can happen, not so much, but let's actually take a look at this. Rank 3, EU Vest. He goes bot lane, he plays Varus. At some point, he is actually going to kill Nami, and we're going to see what he actually is doing right here. Slow pushing, slow pushing, slow pushing, fast pushing, getting some vision. He knows where is the jungle, so what he's going to end up doing, he's going to step into the brush, go into the Nami, and then recall. Right now, he will actually pet towards mid lane. The reason why he pets towards mid lane here is because he saw that Nami is moving. And he knew that Lucian is actually pretty far away from the bot lane right now. Um, so he actually just went mid lane. The reason why he went mid lane is because he wants to kill this guy. Plus the objective is uh, Void Links. He goes mid, he kills this guy. Easy peasy. Right? Easy peasy. Boom. He keeps staying mid lane because Akali is actually going bot lane. Of course, this is not something that you, sh you will do in your rank. This is a game where he's extremely ahead, he's 9-0 and he grouped very early, very very early, even though his tower wasn't really gone here. If Akali still goes mid lane, he will probably just take some minions here <coughs> to make sure he, the, the wave is trimmed correctly. He will kill a few minions and then he will go directly to the bot lane again. Boom, shakalaka, he will go bot lane. Um, and he will keep pushing and play for the tower. Since he pinged multiple times Akali to go bot lane, it's better for us to stay mid. Yes, he didn't get the tower first mid lane, bot lane, but this is an exception. If you're super far away, like he's 9-0 right now, like he's super, 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 super strong right now, and he, if he's super strong like in this specific situation, then again, he doesn't really need to stay bot lane until he gets the tower. He's significantly stronger than Akali, so he's going to stay mid lane and he's going to play for the Voidlings. Should you really concern yourself about the Voidlings be, be low Emerald? I mean, unless it's really free for you to get them, unless you can, like, you know, your mid laner already goes bot lane and he's bot lane and you can stay with your teammates. This rotation is most of the cases coin flip for low elo because it requires your teammates to actually play around you. It requires your jungle to play around you. It requires your, it requires your super to also play around you. If you make this kind of rotations in, your, in, a, in a low rank below masters and you stay by yourself or mid lane and no one is already hovering you, you're most likely going to get killed because even this... Right now, what Varus does, Yone is 2-1 and he's still ahead. He's almost level 10 on Yon, and Varus is level 8. So still, the educators are weak because they actually lose experience. They actually, the experience is um, halved, right, uh, on bot lane. So be very careful when you're making this kind of greedy rotations, super early rotations. Uh, it requires your team to play around you, and I don't personally recommend it unless you get the bot tower. This is what I personally don't recommend it. I mean, now, you know, Grandmaster players, Challenger players will tell you, no, bro, but if you're super ahead, you can group mid lane anyways. You can play for void links. It depends on the wave state. It depends on who is your mid lane and whether she can side lane like Kali, Zed, or other champions, they can easily side lane. Also, champions like Varus or Ezreal, they can group at one item in mid lane. Sure, I'm not talking about these people that are like, you know, insane at the game and they are like really, really good. I'm talking about you that you're in low elo. That's the rule that you can actually respect with let me get the bot tower first and then group. That's kind of what you should be doing in general. Another concept very important here. After he recalls, Varus goes directly to the mid lane. Of course, Akali is bot lane. He just has to play a mid lane. Now he's actually trying to stay left hand side here and potentially look to hover that play. So since he's looking there, he sees that they are dead anyways. He immediately turns to mid lane. He doesn't really keep going. So his camera is perfect. I mean, well, 
he is a challenger player of course he is actually looking to hover on the bot side angle because he sees akali loki going on this guy so what he does is that he immediately tears the bot lane because he thought that yone is just gonna ulti but then when he sees that yone is actually just chilling and akali is backing off and she um she doesn't really want to go in he's going mid lane he's pushing the mid lane and what should he do after he should be active on the map so he wants to play for void links or for herald sorry he's trying to pressure a little bit um, the Lucian so he doesn't go like this he just wants to cut him off like this then now he's debating whether he should hover bot lane or whether he should hover uh the herald the herald is actually dead here he's hovering a little bit the top lane just in case we want to contest for this because he thought that potentially Aurelia might have tp here to use she was like very short on tp he's hovering on top lane just because he wants to um contest this uh this vision is really important to get vision on top side for enemy team in this at this point in time and then right now after varus makes sure that they don't go into the jungle he goes to mid and after he goes to mid lane what does he do he actually hovers the bot lane play he's tipping right here and he's hovering the bot lane play this is very important activity that you have on ad carry physical activity you don't need to let me sit mid lane and wait the wave to come into me kind of mentality you know uh this wave is right here this wave is right here you have lots of time to move until here and if you see that the wave is pushing into you right now you can go back to mid lane so um yeah he just hovered bot lane he saw the guy is actually not killable he's staying in the, the brushes easy peasy he gets a kill there because varus uh, ash is all about vision he pushes the wave and now he has the, the he could recall or he could hover another lane so right now he decides to recall and guess what what is he gonna do he's gonna take the red buff and when he could have gone mid lane here because Lucian is pushing he's actually hovering bot because he saw two people that are engaging he saw that Lucian is pushing mid lane but this fight is closer to uh to him than the mid lane fight so he decided to go bot he's looking to ulti very soon and then now he's going on mid lane what is he gonna do on mid lane well he's gonna hover his teammates he's gonna push he's gonna poke here and again he's always hovering his teammates even when he's actually positioning you see you guys see his positioning he's never on the, the this side he's always on the side with his teammates if teammates are here he's going to be here or here he's going to stay on the right hand side good positioning good setup he pushes the wave and then after he pushes the wave what is he going to do he's going to be very active on the map what do i mean by that he's going to hover his ash he's going to stay fog of war enemy team don't they don't really see him right look at this they don't really see him it's gonna queue from Fago 4. Nami can't really dodge it, unfortunately. Actually, a cute skin on Nami. And then he's gonna hover again and again and again and again. Easy peasy. Easy peasy. And this guy is actually, again, super high low. He's very active. He stays with the teammates. He's hovering place when he should hover, but he's pushing mid lane when he should push. Very, very, very important. Look at this. Now he recalls. He goes back to uh, the fights here. Because they are going on to the Drake. They started the Drake. So he could go made them push or he could just go to the Drake. Since they started the Drake and he sees this fight, he's actually going towards mid lane. If they didn't restart actually uh, the Drake, they will probably he will just look to push mid. And after mid, he will actually follow afterwards. And of course, when you go for a wave, you really have to actually pay attention to the minimap. For example, right now, Arela is taking mid lane wave, bot lane wave is super far, and top lane wave is actually pushing into him. You would have to actually try to click on the map because sometimes the minimums are very confusing and you're not really able to pay attention based on the minions. You're not able to track how many minions we have and how many minions they have. So now he's actually going towards top lane because Arela is pushing mid lane. Obviously, he goes on to mid lane here, uh, onto top lane. He's very, very faker. You guys can see how good he is. He's like looking like a scripter. Easy peasy. So also pay attention to the waves when you are actually uh, going to a fight. And right now, of course, there is a big wave coming into him. But this fight is a lot more important than him just getting the top wave right now. So he just easily wins this fight. GG. So what we learned really here is that you need to be able to, to look to be adaptive on the decision making. And not like if you go to one lane, you need to always be ready to actually move in case you need to move let's say you go to top lane and it's a big wave and then you see a fight that is very close to you like right here then you immediately can follow of course if the fight is really far from you let's say it's right there obviously taking the huge wave right now first then moving after would be the play but in general it depends on the distance of course the distance between you and the fight if the fight is super close like if the fight is uh, relatively close like this you can always consider firing 
uh, if not if it's like more than this let's say it's like half of a map let's say they're fighting here or here and you're top lane right now with the wave you should take the wave and then you should move afterwards in the next situations we're actually gonna go where should you go in the mid game should you stay with your teammates should you group and more so let's see what happened here so with varus and brand we actually got the bot tower easy peasy we get the bot tower and now we immediately just recall where should we go right now well, what we should go is really depending on the waves and the, well, first of all, the waves, the position of the wave and uh, based on where the enemy team is resitting and where, where you, where you want to be sitting. So right now, since I got the tower, I want to be mid lane, easy peasy. The bot lane wave is actually pushed in super far. Mid lane, Syndra is mid lane and it's top lane. Two people are top lane, so we can actually go to top lane. Super easy peasy, easy peasy, right? So I could actually go top lane here, but Trundle is already there. So what am I going to do? Definitely, I'm not going to go bot because the wave is right here. So it will take some time from, for this wave to get here. So I'm going to go on to the mid lane. Why? It's because I want to be mid lane just in case there's going to be a fight. And now after I go mid lane, I ping, I ping Syndra to actually go bot lane. And I see if she's moving bot lane, I will actually stay mid lane. If she's actually staying mid lane, then I will move towards bot lane. So right now, I ping Syndra to actually move bot lane to catch the wave. She didn't actually want to do it. But then she actually was willing to go there reason why she did that is because i know that um syndra has tp in i don't know 20 seconds or something so she can immediately get prio bot lane i'm pretty useful with brand mid lane so we can let her onto the side lane listen can play around her yes you might ask okay man but what am i gonna do if she doesn't follow if she wouldn't follow here then i would go bot lane it's that simple you stay mid like i would go mid she sees me mid lane i ping her assistance assistance two times as you guys can see uh, i ping on my way and luckily she also pinged on my way on bot lane she knew because this is like what masters um so people knew but if she does want to stay mid lane then i would go bot lane uh, no problem of course there is an argument here if you're a grandmaster player and you're saying no bro but syndra should stay mid lane because she has one item and a half she's significantly stronger than you so why would you send bot lane syndra especially because she has tp in 50 seconds she can stay mid lane she can get priority and you guys can play with lee you guys can push bot lane and you can rotate but it's priority for syndra to stay mid lane because she's significantly stronger than you on varus she has one item and a half and 2v2 with the lee they are stronger and she's also level 12 which is true which is true which is absolutely true just as a rule of thumb um just for low elo players again this is what they should be doing when it comes to let me ping my mid lane and then let me see if they actually react but don't ping your mid laner as you're in base just go towards mid lane ping your mid lane while you're mid lane and see if she reacts to it as a rule of thumb, when it's later stages and Baron is up, you want to avoid for as much as possible to be around the side lanes. Of course, unless you need to actually catch a significant wave uh, that is inside of your tower. So for example, in this case, Baron Asher is up, so I need to avoid for as much as possible going bot lane or going top lane. Of course, unless I can push it in a very short period of time, in a very fast period of, very fast period of time, I push it and I move mid, in which case it's absolutely okay. But if I push wave and i push one more wave it's already i'm gonna be late at the party on the the not sure i mean if i push even more it's gonna be even worse so let's see what i do right now so this is actually an exception this scene is actually going there and he's actually starting it right um he is Sindra is actually going as well i mean this, this scene is in thing i don't know why he's doing and i'm actually going bot lane the reason why i'm going bot lane is because i saw akshan pushing a big wave right now and i need to just move there again if it wasn't Akshan pushing here, and if it was pushing here or here, and he doesn't threaten getting the inhibitor, I would most likely just go towards Nashor, as when we have Brand, if he moves immediately, Brand has a lot of damage on the Baron Nashor. Brand, Cassiopeia, Yasuo, Yone, champs like that, right? Kaisa, Krakus Lady uses Akshan, blah, 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 blah. Brand is one of those, okay? So if, if Akshan was pushing right here, or I know that Akshan won't really get the inhibitor, majority of the cases i would either go to nashor or i would just send trundle to go bot lane in this specific case i can't send trundle because he's level 12 he's much stronger than me i'm level 10 i'm very behind in this game and i'm actually not diveable by this guy very easy because i have my ulti uh, very soon in 20, 10, 20, 25 seconds 30 seconds so this is the reason why i actually go bot lane in general i don't want to be bot lane trundle should be bot lane if trundle was right here as well and i was right here as well i would probably send him bot lane if again action was right here i would avoid going bot lane but in this specific case even though everyone is going towards nashor and they are doing nashor i actually stay on bot lane. and of course i'm not stupid i'm gonna immediately turn to the 
to the nashro just in case we can actually save something because my teammates actually died and i'm going to be there a little bit later but i was there it was it was important because next game maybe they're gonna be all low because my teammates will engage and i will actually spend my time pushing bot lane no i can't do that because the battle nashro was up so what i'm saying here is that in the later stages yes you need to avoid staying side lanes um Unless there, has, there are big waves that you can catch in a very fast period of time. In the second tower, you catch them and you immediately go towards Nashor. But in general, you shouldn't be the one that catches side waves. If the, the, if the chances of the enemy team getting Baron Nashor is super high, then you shouldn't really be on bot lane. You should be in the fight, preferably. Of course, there are cases like in this specific case where I prefer to be bot lane. But in general, top lane, your top lane should be bot lane. Or, and you should be mid lane as a rule of thumb. Another decision that I see the carry struggle is the following. So let's take a look at this. Same on my Smurf Master tier. Let's see what happened on bot lane. So something happened on bot lane and I actually died and I'm dying. But what I want to show you is that after everyone is dead here, Kiana is actually going bot lane. I'm actually patting towards bot lane because I see they're actually going to fight. And what I do is that I'm actually checking there and I see that everyone is dead. So what I do is I immediately turn to mid lane because I actually see that the guy is actually catching to mid wave. If in the first place I see that they are dead anyways in, when, when I'm in base, I would immediately go towards mid lane to catch the wave or simply to crush this wave if need be. In this position, I actually saw the Sheiko and Jin still being alive, so I thought that the fight is going to last for a long time. So I actually pat a little bit towards bot lane, and then there is no harm to just immediately repat towards mid lane because I was about to lose the wave. I moved towards mid lane, and my thought process right here is push this wave. Kiana is going to push this wave as well, and then we do the sync rotation where i go back bot lane she goes mid lane she doesn't need to stay bot lane because she doesn't have tp and she's 5-2 so she wants to stay around mid lane especially around void links so i don't need to be now mid especially because she's stronger than me so i do i push and unfortunately let's see is kiana coming mid lane yes kiana is coming mid lane then we engage it we badly kill this guy and then right now what i should have been doing right now is that i should be going towards bot lane i push the wave mid lane and then I'm going to go bot lane to catch the wave. So this is this is actually good macro. This is how you play the map in a good way. And this is how you actually let your mid lane come back. You don't keep staying mid lane. And then of course, if she stays bot lane, she keeps staying bot lane. You, you push mid lane, you go towards bot lane, you ping her to go back to, to mid lane. And she'll probably just go back to mid lane. If she doesn't want it, then you still stay mid lane. Or if she's, she's coming mid lane as you're pushing the wave, then push that, that, being, that, that current wave. And then go back to bot lane. I see a lot of AD carries. They are mid lane. They are pushing. And the, the mid lane is right here. And they're like, okay, she's coming. I'm going to go back to bot lane. No, no, no. You take your wave because it's your wave right now. You don't want to waste your time on mid lane. You take that wave and then you let your, your mid lane be mid. If that's what she wants to do. So make sure you, you pay attention and you take your farm. You're not a role that you can give up some farm. You take everything that you can take. I'm not saying steal the farm if she's mid lane. I'm saying share it if you have to share it, but if she's really far away, like if you're mid lane right here, and if she's super far away here and the wave is in front of you, take it and then swap after. I, I wanna, so AD carry is a role that needs resources to be useful. You're not playing support Silas to be useful if you're zero 10. No, you're playing a role that is reliant on having money, having gold, having dollars in your pocket. Super important. Okay, late game, mid game macro. Wait, what? Mid to late game macro. That's what I mean. Okay, 24 minutes game. Hansama on the Varus. What is he gonna do? Baron is gonna spawn. Where is he gonna go? Top, he can't go. Mid, mid wave is in the middle. Bot wave is coming into him, and there is an, gonna be another wave here. He should go bot, right? Absolutely not. In the later stages, the farm become more and more useless. He has three items and a health. If he had one item, and he had a tower here, and the wave is coming into him, he will most likely go towards bot lane, catch the wave, then go mid. If he had two items, he could consider going both and then go mid. If he has three plus items and two or two and a half plus items and the Baron is up and the chances of the enemy team getting Nashor is high, then he shouldn't really go bot lane sideways. Of course, Krux is stupid call. Bot lane farm is stupid call. Even though some of you could say, yeah, but he's going to get gold, right? He's going to be... No, he's not really right. He should be staying mid lane and he should be with his team. Now, Aatrox is going to go bot lane. And some of you could argue, yeah, but he could have taken the wave, right? Yeah, but then enemy team is going to have a lot of breathing room because they will see Varus on bot lane. They'll get vision here. They'll force a fight if his team is going to try to contest the vision because they know Varus is bot lane. And easy peasy, 
he's gonna lose the game especially because Faros are ash they need to play around vision they need to play around fog of war they need to play around walls they need to play around pink wars they need to play around wars so this is what you do in the mid, mid to late game you prioritize more staying with your teammates unless there is a super urgent moment where you need to catch waves on the side lane as in let's say right now karma is not on the map and aatrox is dead there's a huge wave right here on bot lane you can go really fast catch it and then immediately go to baron nasher that's what i mean in the late game do you need to catch waves you can but the more you go into the game the later you go the, the later the game progresses the less important the farm becomes that's really the rule of thumb and this is what you're going to see on summer he's never going to actually go past this line because he wants to be relatively close to the nasher just in case his teammates or enemy team they want to force that super important don't be actually on sideline so much in the later stages. Of course, right now it's an exception. Two people died. We lose the natural anyways. We don't have jungle. So Hans Amavichovic is just going to go on bot lane. He will try to, uh, to kill the karma. He can't do it, unfortunately, because this guy is so good on karma. And now he ends up dying here. That's how you play mid, mid to late game macro. You don't prioritize farming as much as fighting. So basically... Until one item and a half, we prioritize a, a lot of farming and fighting only in uh, short fights, like fights that are distance-wise pretty close to you. After an item and a half, plus like two items or an item and a half, you can consider joining fights more if they are relatively close. Let's say you're on bot lane, there is a fight. You can consider fighting more. And after three items, then uh, fighting becomes your priority. And of course, you want to catch side waves. You want to get if it's free, if they are around objective, but your main goal is staying around teammates because that's why you play the carry to do damage. Another situation for late game potential, mid game, well, mid to late game macro potential um, rotations and how to play with the decision making. Hansama, again, he's in the fight, of course, 30 minutes in the game. He's staying with his teammates, he's suffering them. Of course, right now, he can actually take the jungle, even in actually trying to walk up. Super, super interesting right here. He's going to try to hover top lane. Right now, he will try to actually contest some vision here. So when he sees Renata is actually going to recall, he could immediately go and turn to the top wave. It's pretty big, if you can say. This wave is actually coming as well. So he still actually stays on mid lane. Why? Well, first of all, Evelyn is having ulti. She's mid. Oriana is keeping out the pressure on bot lane. Urgot is also bot lane. So why would he actually go FK top lane? Yes, it will actually have some pressure because he pushes his tower. But if he push mid lane, it's a lot more pressure and he can also be around the team fight. So this is what I mean when I say in the later stages, you need to prioritize fighting more than farming. If you're in the fight compared to let me just get two waves on top lane to push the tower to have some pressure. True. You get pressure. True. But the real pressure was in that case to push mid lane and to actually push. So if you get a little bit more pressure on top lane, but you're not able to really be in the fight, that's worse than let me push mid lane. Let me get some more pressure, some, some less pressure. But the pressure, the amount of pressure that I have while being around my teammates is higher than any pressure that I can actually have on top lane. Unless I can easily get an inhibitor, in which case it can be different, of course. So this is what Hans Sama did in mid to late game, 31 minutes challenger game. The next play is a little bit more controversial right here, mid to late game, but this actually works on the mid game as well. And it comes to, when it comes to objectives and AD carry, should you take the objective by yourself or should you actually stay with your teammates? In this specific case, Hansama actually goes for the Drake and all of his teammates are pressuring, walking up, taking vision and Evelyn is even going in. Here, I don't actually agree with Hansama, even though in Challenger it works because they'll probably, as they're fighting, as they're getting vision, they have minimap and they'll most likely uh, keep in mind that the Draven is doing the, the Drake. I don't recommend you to do this when you're in low elo because in low elo people are gonna go here they are gonna die stupidly they won't have a mini map and they will not fight as they are actually keeping in mind that you're a drake in low elo what i recommend to you if you're right here with draven and you're like hey i'm gonna go drake and i'm gonna get the objective or hey i'm gonna go to mid lane and then um, we're gonna fight and we're gonna win potentially i would actually advise you to go mid why are you crazy coach it's a soul like of course he wants to get the trick hello and plus he has ulti he they are fine urgot has flash evelyn has flash ulti up oriana is flash up as well like they are so safe they have or another ulti to disengage true but again this is not this is below master tier again 
Below master tier, people are gonna fight stupidly. Below master tier, they're gonna fight for no reason. So instead of taking the objective away right now, I would stay mid. I know that my team is gonna fight in a bad fight, which means most likely enemy team is also gonna take the fight because it would probably be a good fight for them. So I actually want to get the pressure of me being around the, my team and being around the play, and being around the fight so I can eventually carry the game. If I'm gonna stay here like Ansama and just take the, the the Drake, there is a big chance that I'm just gonna lose the fight, which actually happened, right? And Ansama just, they just bought five minutes, of course. But Ansama did is right. But in a solo queue environment, I don't personally think it's right. I think it's just better to just walk up on mid lane and stay a little bit around your teammates, fight with them, and then you can eventually get Drake. Right now, Hansama actually wasn't there, and he wasn't really able to win this game as fast as he could have in 30 minutes. Right now, it's 35, 36, 37 minutes. So that's really the problem with solo queue mindset and competitive mindset. You can go for Drake there if you're with your team clash, blah, blah, blah. You know, you're playing LCS or LC LCK. Your teammates have, have map awareness. But in solo queue, I recommend you to not do <laughs> Drake by yourself. To not do Drake by yourself, to not do natural by yourself, only in specific situations when there is absolutely nothing that you can do. But if one, you can get more farm. Two, you can stay with your teammates and there is a fight that can break, might break. You should be there or you should just take more farm. Getting Drake is anyways not really your priority as an AD carry. You would prefer three waves or two waves or two plates instead of just getting the waves, instead of just getting the Drake. So be very careful if you're using um, what is good and is a correct decision making, which is, you know, playing around objectives, playing around the Drake, but you're actually not understanding that it's solo queue and your teammates will die and you have to actually stay a little bit more to, with them. That's the solo queue playstyle that for me helped me the most. Because not anyone can play in Challenger or Grandmaster playstyle. If you want to actually get good as a player, you also have to be adaptive with your teammates because in low elo, they might do stupid stuff. So hovering them or playing a little bit around them, as long as it's not completely stupid call by them, might be the, the best thing to do as a rule of thumb. In the following minutes, we're actually going to learn how you can snowball a game from the early game with a little lead into a win in the later stages. What you should do to actually have higher chances to win the game after you win the lane. So what is Snowball and how we, can we convert a lead into the early game into a lead into the later stages? And why is it important? So Snowballing on AD carry is the way you accelerate or speed up the game after you got a lead, making it bigger and using it to end the game quicker. Lead can mean CS lead, lead can mean kills lead, it can also mean experience lead, let's say you're higher level. In general, it can mean gold lead, whether you get more plates, um, you get more items because you get more farm. So it's basically, if you want to take it very simple, more gold or more XP than the enemy. Yeah, now a challenger players will come here and tell you, no, bro, it's also like if you have more prio on mid lane, it depends on the jungle, it depends on the team composition. Vision is also really important to approach the brushes. It depends if you're blue side or red side because the, the way the, the game conducts itself is different whether on the object i'm not really talking about challenge i'm talking about below grandmaster really more xp and more gold keep it simple you can just think about those two things i agree with the challenger players i agree that all of these things they are important but we try to make it simple because you're probably below grandmaster and you want to improve in that era first to keep it very simple this will basically mean let's say you get a kill and then after you get a kill on the lane phase, obviously you want to recall. And after you recall, you come back in the lane phase and since you have items advantage, you can get a double. And after you get a double, what do you do? Well, easy peasy, you want to push another wave, you want to get a plate, uh, potentially, uh, potentially stay for more, but in general also go look to recall. So we got a kill in the beginning and then after we recall and we get item advantage, we come bot, we get a double, we get pro plates. We try to push the wave and of course after that we need to try to go for the recall as well with the support so that's basically how you can see it very simplistically of course realistically speaking this is not that easy right so we're gonna actually explore a few situations on how you can actually do it properly i will say that we're only specifically going to talk about after the lane phase and after you won the lane phase we're not going to go in depth how you win the lane phase since we already talked about uh, in the beginning of the video we're going to actually see what do you do if you're 2 0 3 0 4 0 and the lane phase is almost done 
On a theoretical level, it is extremely simple. If you ask like a super high level player how to snowball the game, he will tell you one, you have to be careful of the objective control. That will mean Drake, Herald. You need to make sure you are close to those, especially when you have a lead. It is true that maybe you're gonna say, wait, so should I just move to the Herald? Should, is that what you're telling me? You know, I should rotate. I mean, realistically speaking, the short answer is yes, you should move to the Herald. You should be playing for void links potentially, like staying around your top lane, playing around your top lane. But realistically speaking, as an AD carry, if you move to top lane, you're gonna lose so, so, so much on the bottom side, you're probably gonna lose your tower. So majority of the cases is very unrealistic to think, to believe that, okay, I'm just going to go on the top lane. I'm gonna get the Rift Herald, blah, 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 void link. So as AD carry, it's a huge risk to actually do that. So Heralds is a bit too much. Void links is a little bit too much. There are situations when you can do that. If you have like an item, an item and a health or if you have like a significant lead on the bot lane and say um you have a significant lead on the bot lane let's say and let's say your wave is super pushed and then you prep path towards mid lane you stay here a little bit and then you immediately go back to bot lane because of course we we know that the enemy ADK is going to push like a psycho as you're there so i do not personally recommend you to roam for heralds and roam for void links as this is a play that you know it's good it's good i mean you're gonna move there and your challenger jungle is gonna play around you your challenger support is gonna play around you they're gonna they're gonna protect you they're gonna hook for you they're gonna give a lantern and everything is gonna be fine you're gonna get herald and either you stay mid lane if you have minimum one item and you keep pushing and you send your mid lane to bot lane but or you just go back to bot lane and you just keep playing the thing is again this is not grandmaster and this is not challenger and this is not rank one and this is not korea and this is not people are not gonna listen to you people are not gonna hook for you people are not gonna peel you people are not gonna play around you when you are gonna go for the herald it's a huge risk so this is why i personally don't recommend you to go on herald majority of the cases as an ad carry if you're below Grandmaster because of those reasons you're gonna stay mid you're gonna cry because your mid lane doesn't want to go bot or you're gonna cry that your your mid lane already go bot and you want to go back to bot lane these things will not happen if you don't move if it's super free you can consider grouping but Herald is not something that I personally recommend you to play around Drake is a bit different because around Drake if you have a lead you should always get prior and you should always be able to fight there obviously it's quite important for you to um, stay around your teammates if you actually play like they do drake it's preferably you're gonna be there and you're gonna stay with them and try to fight because if you have a lead you need to convert it but let's see more specifically how you should do it so the theory says it like this objective control play things and roaming objective control is staying around drakes and staying around objectives play things means after you get a kill you play to push the lead i see a lot of players they just get a kill they recall they get a kill they recall that's quite oh that's okay it's good that you get a, a kill but what you should really try to do is like you get a kill you push a wave you push a plate and then you recall you get a kill you take a wave you take a plate you take the crugs and then you recall this is kind of the concept of course you might say yeah but it's not possible you know it depends on the dead timer of the enemy carry what if i can die by getting the plate what if the plate is full hp what if what if the plate is full hp what if what if uh, you know i know i can die let's say the let's say i'm gonna go for the plate here and the enemy laners are super close to me and they can stop my recall then you shouldn't go for the plate if it's like hard for you or you're gonna die you're risking a lot or the enemy jungle can kill you of course you're not gonna overextend and try to force accelerating the game in general you need to play to push your lead to accelerate your lead to speed up the game as i said in the definition of snowballing as in after you get a kill, you need to be looking to get more and more and more. I don't want to say you need to be looking to be greedy for resources because when you pronounce the, the, the word greedy, you're actually saying risk. You do not want to risk yourself dying, risk yourself getting stopped of the recall because in the end, after you get a kill, you get a plate, you also want to get go for the recall. If you know that they can stop your recall, then you shouldn't have gone for the plate. You should just recall. If you know you can recall safely after you get the plate, you should go for the plate for sure. So you should play the the after you get a lead you should play to get more and more and more and more and try to push it in a safe way not greed yourself so that doesn't mean oh, okay we need to play to win i'm gonna force the fight no you're not forcing the fight you're just playing to win you're just playing forward and you're playing smart that doesn't mean of course when your jungle is top and you play aggressive that doesn't mean if you don't know what is the enemy jungle you play aggressive just because oh the coach told me that i need to accelerate the game so i need to play aggressive no you don't need to you need to play smart to begin with and then if you're 2v2 and you can um you see that 
you can play aggressive but not overly aggressive then you can obviously go in now we're actually going to look at a few examples in high elo and also lower elo to actually get a little bit of a better grasp of how to do this properly so right now we're talking about again how to snowball right so the first step is really we need to try to get the tower on bot lane this is the first step of snowballing and if you want to do it properly you need to make sure you win the lane phase as hard as you possibly can so for example after you get a kill before you get a tower you want to make sure you kill them as much as possible so this is hansama challenger 1000 lp he made the ash being 0-3 so right now what he's gonna do is very simple he'll try to get the tower he'll try to snowball he'll try to play pretty aggressive and then right now after he snowballs right now he is going to go to mid lane there is no reason for him to go back to bot lane here even though this guy is pushing it's because he's super strong he has an item and a half right now even if he had an item he would still go mid lane because the wave was pushed pretty far and right now he goes mid and after he goes mid lane right here now he can choose to just go back to bot lane to catch the wave but since he knows he's super super strong right now and he can just play for either the tower mid lane or the herald he just sends the talia on the bot lane so do not overstay on the bot lane you want to group mid lane if you have a lead you want to use it don't let your mid laner stay in mid so try to preferably let him to stay in mid lane and try to group when you push the wave bot lane try to spend as little amount of time as possible when having the lead try to spend as little amount of time as possible onto the uh, side lane of course this will also depend a little bit on the champion you play now you might contradict me and say yeah but it's different because if i play draven is illusion it's different compared to a vein isn't it it is true it is true the thing is if this is hansama and he's 4-0 on vein he does the same thing right here so it might vary a little bit on the champion i agree but this is just the general concept that you should be doing so right now you see that Hansama is like 1v9ing here in this game. He's actually uh, mid lane and he, he tries to snowball very, very, very hard. If the Talia would be mid lane, obviously Talia is not so strong. She has like, what, 5k gold for 4 Talia. Uh, Hansama mid lane is benefiting the team a lot more because if he's stronger than Talia, then why would he let Talia to stay mid lane and be in every fight compared to, uh, you know, Talia bot lane and Draven is stronger on mid lane. So he wants to be in the fight. He's the one that wants to be in the fight. So he puts himself in the team fights by being mid lane do not spend do not over like don't spend any overtime on bot lane once you get your tower try to be mid lane as much as possible in the next situation we're actually going to see hansama again um, and we're going to see how he tries to snowball a game in Ligo legando okay so in this case specifically you're going to see and you're going to learn about platings and about snowballing specifically in the first part of the snowball that is the first part of the snowball which inquires how you when you get plates how you should push waves how you can actually go aggressive and the second part when it actually inquires the grouping part and staying around your teammates so you can actually help your teammates because that's what you're doing you're snowballing to speed up the game you need to help out your teammates so let's see how Hans Sama does it right here very simple so the lane phase is going to be quite uh, quite normal he's going to just, just play super super aggressive we're not really going to analyze too much what he's doing in the lane phase he's obviously playing a Senna versus Tristana so he wants to zone level one and he just wants to play super aggressive so what he does right now is that he's trying to slow push the waves and he's trying to constantly uh, poke he does know where the enemy jungle is um right now so this is why he's playing this aggressive and this is why he's trying to push the lane recalling in a situation like this is bad pushing is best because they were low so if they want to recall right now and you're pushing tristana will consider twice if she wants to recall because she's gonna lose a lot of minions so this is the reason why he doesn't slow push also he's not really in danger of the enemy jungle because warwick is on the river and he does have this word plus jana as a setup with Cartus, it's not really the best in the world so he's actually fine here so the worst thing that you could do right now here that i see some players do it they will recall when the enemies are lower than they are or uh, they will stop pushing when there is no danger of of you know you dying of course on the other side if you don't know where is the jungle then pushing here is bad unless you want to recall if you don't know where is the enemy jungle you can consider playing slower and looking to slow push and try to word and playing safer but if you can and if you're safe depending on again who is the enemy jungle uh, does the fcc who is the enemy support as fcc in these cases obviously uh you can uh if you you are safe then you should definitely look to snowball the game so he's pushing right now he doesn't even care about the cartus because warwick is around he does have a, a lot of a lot of confidence here we see hansama of course this is a lec player and he's going to 
push, of course. I mean, there is no reason for him to recall, even though he has no mana. The enemy have less HP than him. A lot of players will recall here. A lot of players will be like, oh, no, you know, I need recall. I have so much gold, you know, 800 gold, or I'm low on mana. No, 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 no. You want to stay. They need the recall more than you. Ask yourself, every time when, you're healthy, when you want to recall, ask yourself, does the enemy need the recall more than I do? Because if the answer is yes, and if, if you can pressure reliably into the enemy tower, you can consider staying. I mean, now I'm not saying if it's half HP and you're full HP and you have 2k gold, you don't recall because he needs the recall more than you. It depends, of course, on your goal as well and on how much pressure you can maintain on the enemy tower and the enemy laners. If you can get plates or if you can pressure them into the tower, think twice if you really want to recall this is what Hansama does he pushes and now he can't afford going for plate the reason why he can't go for plates here is because Tristana is coming pretty soon and if he wants to go for plates I mean yes the advantage is that he has a big wave so he can get it relatively easy the disadvantage is that it's four minutes in the game he is not able to get it too fast and second of all if he's going to try to recall in the second brush Kartus will most likely walk up on them and then stop their recall so he does not greed for the place now he does have a lead obviously he's going to just get items uh, and right now he does have a freeze Notris is gonna go really aggressive because he saw Senna on the mid lane Hansama is just gonna stun this guy immediately right here and Chunker and of course right now you might wonder oh shit he's gonna let the wave to come into him right because this is the wave it's coming into him well not really he wants to snowball the game he doesn't want to freeze freezing is fine if you want to deny Tristana, but if you want to pressure any killer in the tower and snowball, you should convert this slow push into you, into a slow push into Tristana, so you can make a huge wave, crash into the enemy tower, and force two or three plates. Yes, it is true that you will say, oh, but this depends on the enemy jungle, right? Well, in general, it does, because if the chances of him dying here, let's say he's this HP, or there is a Zinzao jungle, or there is a Jarvan, or he is fleshless, again, these things will matter for him so he's gonna be like okay is the chance is the chance that i'm gonna die here high because if the answer is yes he will always freeze always let the wave come into him but since it's not since jana was mid lane since it's just a card to the jana since he does have flesh his potential of two versus three based on the fact that tristana is low hp is very high therefore he snowballs he pushes this again another player would just be like, oh, I want to freeze, I want to freeze, right, I want to freeze. No, no, no. You just want to slow push this. You want to convert this into a slow push because the slow push into them will help you more than the freeze into your tower. Freeze into your tower will make Tristana lose like 10 to 12 minions. Um, pushing and making this slow push into them will make Tristana lose like 4 minions plus plates. But this is better. This is better. You don't actually care about the number that Tristana is going to lose. You care more about what, how much you're going to get. Uh, that's super important. So that's what Ahzama does. He's better killing them here he's just obviously crushing right now because they are very low and he's staying he's staying he knows where is the enemy jungle he has good map awareness he dives and after he dies what is he gonna do he's nobling he doesn't he doesn't recall like a pussy he takes plates again we're talking about a player that he knew that where Kartus is he was top lane so the worst thing that can happen is just if he's going to go to bot lane here but in this specific case he will immediately just get the plate and as we can see here if he knew where is the Kartus and he knew that Tristana is pretty far away uh, he will try to get to go for the plate but it's not one he doesn't he does know that Tristana is pretty close why is because look at this Tristana just respond and when you have the when you die the move you get movement speed in base right so this the Hansama knows that Tristana right now is around this around this angle so if he tries to go for this plate his recall is probably going to get stopped or even worse he's going to die plus of course some of you might say yeah but what about the jungle because he could be here true right now he could be here because it's a lot of time that passed um, so at the moment he's also scared of the enemy jungle he auto attacked the tower once for fleet footwork and now he's just going to run uh, and now he's just going to try to, to, to be safe. He's just going to try to kite. Again, very, very good gameplay by, by Hansama. He didn't overextend. He went for the plate. He went for the plate when he should have. Uh, but again, he didn't overextend for too much. He knew that um, the amount of plates that he can get is dependent on the chances of him dying there. So if he does know where is the jungle and he does know that Tristana is still on the dead timer or she's still around this area, he can always go for a plate. He won't go for a plate. He won't go for an extra wave if Tristana is on her way right here and he knows that one, he can either die of Tristana or Jana or two, even his recall might get stopped of 
three stana after he gets the plate or three and even worse if the enemy jungle can and might kill you you're not gonna stay for the plate he knew all of these things and even though he died here you can see that it's different compared to a silver player that stays here pushes this wave okay i wanna push the wave i wanna i wanna you know snowball i wanna push this wave before i recall when anyways this wave is pushing into into you so there is no need for that and Hansama that just hit the minions once and then for fleet footwork and then now he's backing off there is a difference if Kartus is here and you're in the tower there is a difference if you you beautifully play like like right now clean and you know when like how many plays you should really get and uh, the Kartus is going to catch you in a position where you can actually trade one for one so this is really the gameplay of Hansama, uh, how he, when he goes for the plates, when he doesn't go for the plates, how much waves should he push, should he push one more, should he recall right away, based on these things you have to decide, that timer of the enemy and the chances of the enemy jungle killing you this is simple and now he's just gonna look to slow push the jana was mid lane so he's just gonna fast push right now he's gonna try to snowball, 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 meaning pushing and trying to pressure since the warwick is actually around, easy peasy easy peasy so this is what we're gonna see right now by hans uh pushing 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 double kill he's gonna try to play for the tower right now he just killed them so what is he gonna do well right now he has different option uh one is go for drake two is go for plate uh in this case we do have prior mid lane twisted fate is also mid lane here so realistically speaking um uh, what we can do it by himself so i don't think hans sama should ever move here um right now he's just gonna go for the plate and right now guess what he's gonna go for even more the reason why he does this is because uh, even though he knows he knows for sure that Tristana is right here and he should not go for the plate or the wave if the Tristana is around this plate around this side and he knows that he might get stopped of the recall realistically speaking right the problem is that right now the warwick is doing drake and it's 3k hp and more importantly hansama is significantly stronger than tristana so him staying right here will never result into him dying because if he knows he can die here he'll most likely just help with the drake a bit and reset because he has 1.3k gold but in this specific situation he's so much stronger than tristana that even if he doesn't recall he's safe and the fact that he's keep pushing bot lane is generates pressure for Warwick. So Tristana, if she's cracked in the head, she can't just do this because she's losing too many minions into the tower. In general, you might say, yeah, bro, but isn't it in general better to just recall and not stay like this and just, you know, recall? Again, of course, if your jungle doesn't do Drake, it's better to like spend your gold. And yeah, it, it is in general, but of course you need to also uh adapted based on the minimap and more importantly uh, adapted on how strong you are because hansama knew like tristana is not like you can see that he, he knows that tristana is not gonna kill him at all like he's never gonna kill him or because bot lane he saw jana on mid lane and what is he gonna do he's gonna push tristana just spawned there is no reason to recall right now right now he pushed and right now he's actually just recalling because he sees he knows that tristana is very close so he can't go for this plate and he also has a huge amount of gold easy peasy he knew when to go for a plate he knew when to back off back off he knew when too much is too much and he is not able to go for the plate based on the dead timer and he knew how to adapt on the map he got clean recall timing he didn't overextend he only overextended when he knew that the tristana is very very weak and even if he doesn't recall he can win it anyway so now he's gonna get the tower and after he's gonna try to get the tower we will group mid lane it's that simple it, this is how simple it is for you to snowball look at this and now he's gonna go mid lane well in this case he's gonna go top lane because this is challenger but this requires your support to play top lane your can your can or whatever your jungle is to play top lane and of course in lcs lec you always play top lane after you get the bot tower this is not realistic in silver gold platinum emerald even low masters because junglers and support they're not usually gonna play with you so if you play top lane you usually play against a malfi that is level 12 13 14 and you're gonna be in trouble so i do not recommend you this rotation unless you're playing clash or competitive or you really know what's what's going on but yeah staying mid lane you can't go wrong with this staying mid lane you cannot wrong go wrong with this in general in like below master tier i'll always go mid lane and not top lane of course now if you're a grandmaster player then of course you should always consider grouping top lane depending on the team composition but this is how uh hansama is snowballing the game with perfect decision making and how snowballing the game of course there are situations where you're grouping mid lane earlier than after you get the first tower as i said in the beginning of the video so for example here i'm playing varus i barely i almost have one item 
something happens here i reset and i see that my wave is very pushed in i know Kalista is pretty close but i also know that this dress actually just went in on the mid lane so what i do is that i path towards mid lane i have an item and the health so i'm okay with patting mid lane i'm obviously paying attention to the bot wave so if they fight here i might actually do something i q I try to be around and I see Kalista is pushing, so right now I can do two things, either just go bot and catch the wave, or if I know I can pressure them on mid lane, I can actually trade the plates on bot lane with the plates on mid lane. And this is what I actually choose to do. Of course, if the Vladimir is full HP and I can't pressure him, I will immediately go bot lane to catch 60 to 70% of the wave. Most likely I'm going to lose 3 to 4 minions here minimum. Um, and but right here what I decide to do is pushing mid lane because we do have Kha'Zix around and we can easily pressure this Vladimir since he's very very low HP. We end up killing him and then Kalista is actually moving here uh, with us. We get the mid tower so this was overall a worth trade. What Kalista did right here is reasonable. She actually went to bot lane. I mean obviously my decision of going mid lane will depend on this wave. My wave is fully pushed in so I have so much time to go mid lane and then I also have time to go back to bot but she doesn't. This wave is pushing into her. It's gonna hit the tower very soon so she has to go bot lane. So this is correct by her. This is okay. After she pushes mid lane, she sees, sees me, me mid lane, she has two options, push the wave move or push the wave get tower. Push the wave move, well, she has an item, so she has Borg, so she could. It's just way too far and if Varus has ulti and flash, Kalista can't really do much uh, with the trash that is low HP. So the correct point here, the correct move here is just to push the, the tower. Right now she's actually moving, but this is why this guy is Diamond 2 and not Master, not Grand Master. There's no reason for you to move here. You might think that, oh, but of course, look how overextend the Kha'Zix is it is true he's overextended but here the tower the wave then recalls and goes to mid lane she gets so big of a lead she actually moved here and she tried to kill the Kha'Zix actually this is very close this is a coin flip this is why this player is d4 d3 hard stuck she can't really win much it's because she makes she made the decision that sometimes it will work but next game Kha'Zix will have flash he will be slightly stronger and she will just die you guys can see right here how close this was and Kha'Zix was really low so <laughs> in this specific situation again um, if 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 Kha'Zix wasn't really that low he obviously would have win this really 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 hard so this was a very coin flip decision making by the Kalista and obviously I wanted to show you that you can also group mid lane before the first tower is gone uh, and still pay attention to the bot wave and you always pay attention to the bot wave you can always consider going back to bot or even just giving a bot ranger keep pushing mid lane if your champion is strong enough to pressure the enemies on mid lane there are obviously situations where, again, as I said, you get the tower, but you're not grouping mid lane. So let's take a look at this Diamond 2, Diamond 3 MMR game. Where this is actually me on Lucian. I try to push the wave. I see Kamel on the mid lane. I try to pressure Vayne. I'm very, very ahead. 79 farm against 51 farm. So let's see what I do here. So I actually push the wave. Then I immediately keep pushing. The reason why I do this is because I know that I'm pretty safe. And this was actually Fog of War. So right here, it was Fog of War where I stayed. I'm gonna walk up because I know that even if Kamel comes, I'm still okay. And what I do right now, I just try to pressure the vein a little bit. And after I get the tower, I see Lilia on top lane. I know that Kamel can't kill me if I have exhaust. So I just push the wave. I know that if I equal and go mid lane, I'm not gonna do anything. They're gonna die anyway. So what I do here is I keep pushing. I keep pushing and keep pushing because I see that my teammates were already dead. So if I recall and go mid lane, that's fine. I might potentially actually kill this guy. But if I keep staying on bot lane, it's even better because I can just pressure this guy on the vein. I'm almost double farm of her. I know Kamel is still not here for now. And then when I know Kamel is actually around or she might be around, I, I might get tp behind, stuff like that. I just recall and I immediately go towards mid lane. So I didn't immediately move after I get tower, I move to mid lane or after I get tower I recall I try to push my lead because I knew that the fight top lane is extremely far and extremely done it was dead anyways before I actually get there because I actually was looking with my camera there right as I was pushing they were dead anyway so this is why I decided to actually keep pushing there are situations where you can do this there are situations where you stay more on side lane but as a rule of thumb snowball means you win the lane phase by getting kills getting lead you get the tower bot lane and after that you group on the mid lane in general another situation right here i uh, am lucian 5 to 2 against the gene 3 4 i'm significantly more ahead than them 1k ahead here we have five kills cs3 so let's see what I'm going to do right here. I try to snowball, try to push. I see the enemy jungle is actually on the uh, mid lane. 
and I keep pushing, keep pushing, keep pushing. And after I push right here, I have only 800 gold. I need a lot more for the item. So I decide to, decide to stay. I could recall and go mid or I could go mid right away or I could just go for the Drake. Uh, pushing bot is not really an option. I don't really get anything by pushing this wave. I know that this guy is going to start Drake. So I stay around. Try to play super, super aggressive. Just chunk the Lee Sin really, really, really well here. And I try to, to style on them here. E over the wall. It couldn't really do much here. I just try to bait them. And we got the Drake and uh, yeah i got the bot tower but i didn't really need recall so i just wanted to, to to snowball the game from there after i got the tower i wanted to use my lead to help my jungle and of course right now unfortunately i can't go mid lane because gwen is pushing look at this i can't just recall right now like gwen is going bot if i'm gonna recall she's gonna push and get the tower so i have to stay after i have to stay i push 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 we try to chunk her a little bit and then of course, right here, again, I check my gold, 1195. So right now I need a little bit more gold for the item. So what I do is that I stay here. We see, we catch the Gwen, I try my best to kill her immediately. I push the wave and then here I just recall instantly. I know that I'm never going to get this, this tower unless I overextend for like 30 seconds, which is insanity. They can just flank me. I recall and now I play the adaptive mode with grouping. I play it on my teammates. They are top lane right now, so I could have just gone top lane right away here. But since I saw two people here and he had no mana, I thought, okay, four people dead. They're going to get the tower. I'm going to go mid lane. I just push this. And then right now they are low key fighting. So I could consider hovering there. But since I know that I can get this tower very easy, I'm not even going there. The fight is relatively far since I can easily get this tower. So this is what I do now. He's actually starting the, the, the Herald. So I'm trying to hover around. And this is how carry has to be played. In general, you have to group after the tower is gone, but there are situations where you're forced to actually stay on the bot lane and after you stay on the bot lane, you try to get away from that situation, go mid lane as fast as possible and play with your teammates. When you're on, on mid lane, you want to make sure you're not going to uh, just farm. You're farming, but always looking at your teammates and if the fights are close to you, you can always consider to go there and group with them. Simple. In the next situations, we're actually going to analyze five big mistakes that low elo players do when it comes to snowballing the lead from the early game to a lead into the later stages. So let's take a look at these five examples from low elo games. So the first one is around low platinum high gold. We do have this Caitlyn. So it's with the pike. So we're expecting her to play pretty aggressive. She's getting lethal tempo, which is horrible on Caitlyn, especially against Ash and Velkos, but we're not really going to talk about that. Let alone the fact that she doesn't have clans against Ash and other things. Um, we're not going to talk about that. So she leash, then she stays into the brush. She tries to play pretty aggressive. She kills the minions. She gets a little bit too much poke. They are playing quite aggressive. Velkos dies. So right now, if Velkos died, obviously they need to prepare to try to push this wave. They are going very, very, very aggressive. That's fine. Even though she actually fought into a huge minion wave right now, right now she needs to just recall. She actually crushed the wave right now and she didn't know where is the jungle. Okay, right now she just found out where is the jungle. So at the moment, she just needs to recall. She has 500 gold. She doesn't need to stay in this position. The cannon is going to die very, very soon because the tower is hitting it and they only have three minions. So this is not a freeze. If the Caitlyn had four minions right here, then she would have to stay to crush because obviously that would be a freeze. But since right now there were four minions, like well, three casters and one cannon, the cannon is gonna die. Only three minions. If she stays here with the Ash, the wave is actually slow pushing into the Caitlyn on the next wave right here. So in this specific situation, what she should do is that she should recall. Now she is staying, which you know, if she sees Mastery being top lane and she knows where is Velkos, he, he knew that he actually recalled. It's not the end of the war, but he really has to recall very soon. And she doesn't need to crush the wave. She just recalls right now. That was a big mistake because if she was actually playing against good players, these players will actually stop her. So she overextended a little bit more than she should have. And the mistakes are not going to stop right here. So she's going to be in the laney phase. And let's take a look at this. She comes back in the laney phase and guess what? She is going to get ganked very, very, very soon. So we're not going to talk about like how she played it right here, that she wasted her flesh and stuff like that. She played really nice with the trap. Nice try. Kill the mastery. Right now she has a huge amount of gold. 1k gold. Right now wave is pushed into the tower so she could recall right away, but she decides to keep staying for one more wave. This is good as she's 1v2 and Volk was just recalled right here. So this is fine. 
if she pushes one more wave. If she still stays after this wave, that's quite bad, because she knows that since Velko's return to the wave, um, the plate is untakeable, there is no way that you're gonna kill them anyways with full HP, and you have 1000 gold. So what she should do right now is that she should recall. Now, she would say, oh coach, but I can't snowball the game, you know, I, I can't do it, why can't I do it? I win the lane invades, but I can't convert it. One of the reasons why people can't convert it is because they don't have good recall timings. They overstay in the lane phase when they have to recall. It's good to try to push your lead, but when this guy, for example, he knew that he can't, he did have 1000 gold, and he knew that he can't re-kill them in the tower, slash pressure them, slash gets plates, then he should never stay right here. And this is very embarrassing because they're just going to still win the lane, so even though they actually made a bad decision, she's still going to win the lane anyways, that's very, but the decision making is not good. So this is one mistake that people do when it comes to snowballing, they don't know when to recall, and they don't know when exactly they should stay for plates. Another situation when the player was not able to push the lead. So let's take a look at this. So the Caitlyn is pressuring and she's playing against Ezreal Timo. They need to push, they need to poke. Caitlyn Lux is the best lane face in the game in terms of range and poke potential. Let's see what they're gonna do. So the Caitlyn is going to slowly but surely going to get poked here. And she tries to punish, she gets tower shot and she wants to stay or does she want to recall? Well, in this specific situation, she just wants to uh, stay. She needs to stay. But wait, where is the support right now? Because the support just recalled. Because she has no mana. The problem in this case is that if the, the Caitlyn wants to stay and get plates, which is good because she, she's pushing her lead. The, she has HP lead and CS lead. She wants to push the lead by taking the plate. This is correct move. The thing is, in this specific case, if it's pretty easy to get a plate, which it is relatively easy because it's half HP, you have a lot of range and you have significantly more HP, you should not recall unless there is a very high chance that you're going to die of external factors like the jungle, which is not because you have the Briar here, you have the Ward here. So it's good that you stay. The thing is, if you stay 1v2 against the Teemo compared to if you stay 2v2, it's much different. And some would say, wait, but Lux is recalling because she has no mana, right? True. But at the same time, if she's going to wait 10 seconds, she'll have enough mana for the Q. She anyways has exhaust and she anyways has auto attacks. That's all what the Caitlyn needs. She needs the HP of the Lux in case she needs to tank the tower because she can easily dive. So what she should have done right here with Caitlyn is if she knows she can get the plate or if they are low enough for her to exert a big amount of pressure, which she is because the Ezreal is low, then she should ping the Lux to stay with her. If the Ezreal is full HP and the plate is pretty healthy and she's not able to get the plate reliably, then she should immediately recall and recall at the same time with the Lux. Mistake by the Caitlyn right here. The next mistake a lot of players do. So if we're in the first beginning of the, the, the replays, we actually talked about when to get plates, when to push more and how to extend the lead and really how to use your recall in order for you to, to make sure you stabilize the lead and you don't lose it, you don't throw it away. Now we're going to see the later stages. It's very important after you won the lane, you get the tower, you group mid lane, you try to make something happen or stay with your teammates or just at least stay around them. In this case, the Caitlyn is two, three items right now. Ezreal has two items. He's pushing on both lane. The Baron is up, which is really important because obviously the more, the, the more, the bigger the objective is, the less time you have to spend for the objective. So right now, sorry, the, the bigger the objective is in the game, the less time you have to spend on the side lane. Okay, on the side lane. So right now she's going bot lane. Yes, the Baron is up, but she has to go bot lane. She has to go bot lane. So this is all okay. This is all okay. Now she's moving, which is really good because obviously these people are fighting. She's keep moving, keep moving, keep moving. And now since the fight is far, she just goes back to bot lane. Right now she tries to get the camp, which is absolutely okay because she's quite low. And then she's going to go on bot lane. The thing is, there is the Baron up. Okay. And it's very simple when you have Vayne, she's dead. Viego is actually alive and three people are dead. You have Caitlyn, you have Mundo and you have Lux on the mid lane as well. So in this case, what she should do, realistically speaking, is that she should push the wave and she should go mid. 
The reason why she should do that is because if Viego dies, we immediately get Baron. If you keep pushing right here, there is nothing that you can achieve. You can't even get this tower. You have to stay a lot. And then if the vein has TP here, she will TP behind you and she will kill you. And they get Nashor again. So it's so bad to spend your time on the side lane in situations like this. She was still trying to move, but this is bad. Like why, why did she try to take this wave? And why was she actually moving towards the next minion wave instead of taking that wave and then immediately moving towards mid lane? She should not look to stay here, she should look to go to the Nashor and the fact that she's looking to split push when all of her teammates are mid lane and then we can go for the Nashor, the fact that she's spending her time on the side lane like this when all what she has to do in the mid game is stay with the team. I mean I understand that she went on bot lane because Ezreal was pushing here, there's a big wave, she had to catch it but after that she should immediately try to go back to mid. I understand that she actually got the cracks to get the lifesteal but after that she should immediately look to go towards mid lane okay if you're super low and you need the, the lifestyle then you can take it but after that you need to immediately move mid lane not split push on the bot lane not play around nothing because you guys might think oh but you know we don't do baron in gold or platinum well yeah but the thing is if you're on caitlin and you're mid lane and you ping it your teammates will have higher chances to follow you compared to you staying bot lane and then obviously when your teammates are gonna see you they're gonna try to help you they're gonna try to be with you so don't make it worse your teammates are already having a relatively bad macro in low elo but if you also spend so much time on the sideline after you are actually having so many so many so many so many items and you know you can make a significant impact in the team fights. Don't stay on the sideline. Look at this. She pushed bot lane and she immediately went mid lane. Good, Caitlyn. Well played, brother. Well played, brother. And right now you should not AFK. You should stay with the Lux. Stay with the Lux. Hover her. Hover her. Just stay behind her. This is good. Push the wave and then hover her. So this was better from the Caitlyn. Yes, she didn't play it mechanically well. Yes, she out of position. Overall, this is much better than spending her time on the bot lane after she has so many items and after the Baron is up. Do not spend, try to avoid spending time on the bot lane, on the side lanes when the objectives are up. Especially if the side lane that you're spending the, the time is the opposite of the objective. Like your bot lane, objective is top lane, you don't want to be there. Now we're going to talk about teamfights, how to play teamfights, how to get better at playing teamfights and what are the most important things to be an amazing teamfighter from basic concepts to complex concepts. So let's take a look at this. The first thing that you need to go into the game with is a plan. A plan will help you to have an easier time to approach the teamfights and it will be easier for you to anticipate enemies movement if you make a plan beforehand based of course on the champions that they have or they pilot. So let's take a look at this example. So we have to take a look into consideration three really important things. Number one is what can kill me. That can mean abilities or like well uh, the enemy champions uh, abilities and usually it's actually considered the CC of them like what they have to actually hit on you. Let's say it's Nautilus hook or Malphite ulti. You gotta know exactly okay this guy if he's gonna hit this particular ulti i'm dead malphite ulti nautilus ulti you got it okay so this will actually mean again what can kill me this is the first question so we need to actually know enemy champions positioning enemy champions abilities enemy champion cooldown awareness we're talking about this all of these things and of course uh, itemization can also uh, come in place and Ezreal with half an item is not as strong as an Ezreal with three and a half items let's say the second thing is the question how can I kill them so this would actually be like okay now I know what uh, how can they actually kill me now I need to figure it out how can I kill them and this will mean knowing your champion let's say you play uh, let's say Ezreal okay I'm gonna play for poke and when I have a good opening and it's free I'm gonna use my E as long as I'm gonna keep myself safe that's a very important aspect keep myself safe I can use my E aggressively that's like an Ezreal mindset on how can I kill them and of course you need to know your champion so if you have less than 50k on your champion that usually means uh, not that you're not good on your champion, but that you're not clean. And you have to just play, especially when you play the Kerry, Vayne, Ezra, Samaira, blah, blah, blah. You need to actually have good knowledge on your champion. Some people that play 20k and they know that, oh, okay, I know how to play this champion. They know, they know how to play the champion. That's not wrong, but you need to be clean on it. You need to be excellent on your champion. So you need to, do, you need to actually play maybe 75, 100k uh, points, maybe on some champions like Draven, even more. Of course, it depends on you. It depends on uh, the rank. Because if you're challenger and you're first time, Draven in bronze then you're probably gonna take you 20 games or whatever you know but if you're like let's say Emerald then you want to play a new champion maybe it might take you a little bit more you know you got it 
So again, how can I kill them is the second question. And third thing is execution. Of course, I can execute it uh, mechanically in a way. You can execute it mechanically in another way. Gumayushi can do it in a way, way different uh way different way so it's very simple how can you kill how can like what can kill me is the first question how can i kill them is the second question and the third question is am i able to execute this mechanically so let's take some practical examples and uh, see these things so what we see right now on the screen is basically an example where i use i played vein so it's very straightforward the first question how can uh, they kill me so really if the we need to think about read really this big cc abilities that they have so uh, you might jump and say brom q well the thing is brom q can kill you more in the laning phase especially with the combo with ezreal they are actually pretty good but realistically speaking if i have tumble and i played reasonably good i shouldn't really get hit by the the q it's not something like nautilus q or blitzkrank q which is a bit harder to dodge than the the brom q so the brom q is something like a minor uh, cc but the really what i need to be careful of is rexai flank and rexai flash on me that's really the most important thing here you can also argue that okay renekton can e can flash can w on me through through that's also not so like uh, the rexai flash is i would say a major one the brom q is like a medium or minor one and the renekton is like a medium to minor one the reason why i say that is not big threats because if you think about it vein has a very good kit against this champion because she can kite really well she has condemned she has stumbled she can become invisible it's very hard for them to approach me vein ezra lucian they're all really good with this so when you're thinking about what can kill me you're also thinking about you know your champion for example a blitzcrank if you play jinx is a huge threat but a blitzcrank if you play severe is not so huge because you have your e you got it okay good so how can ki they kill me it's very simple the biggest thing is flash uh, w from next side or flank from next side the second biggest thing is renekton going in with e and w and maybe flash and the last thing is the brom flash q or ultimate you can also argue that okay but you have to actually respect aurelia soul eh? well you can argue that you can you need to respect everyone even Ezreal at some point but you just need to think about the most important things like the key abilities is really the e of the rex i uh the w of the renekton and the e because if he doesn't have easy he's dead like he can't really close the gap to you and then the brom ultimate or q depending on how close he is to you so this is a question how can they kill me you have to have a very straightforward answer the w of the rex i or flank the brom q in situations when i'm too close or the renekton whether he has his flash or he's close enough to e into me simple as that okay the second thing was as i said uh, how can i kill them so this will depend on what champion you're playing if you play ezreal as i say you play different if you play vein in this case specifically in this one my game plan is hey if i'm gonna play team fights i need to play it very slow i'm not gonna go into backline unless it's very very safe and i'm gonna do the ghost uga booga thing and just go in the backline but otherwise i'm gonna play it very slow try to actually do front to back hit the closest target because they have brom so if i try to engage on ezreal he's most likely gonna kill me plus aurelian soul is gonna have so much hp later on so going in the back line is fine is an option if it's safe but it's just more uh, unrealistic so now we need to also think about what does our composition want to do because this is quite important if you think about it nautilus vi garen air ari they are all engaged champions they can they can play pretty aggressive you can argue that nautilus and ari can also be disengaged which is true uh, the thing is they do have the brom so we have an engaged composition into brom an engaged team composition into brom or jana or this it's not so good because they have so much disengage that if we use vi ulti for example on ezreal brom is always gonna put the door there put the e and then it's ggbg so this composition is quite hard, hard to play actually of course in low elo it won't matter that much but it's good to like think about it you know to, to, like be aware of these things so it's very simple how can they kill me it's the, the abilities that i said before how can i kill them it's really uh, staying hitting the closest target keeping myself safe and just hitting them as much as possible i don't need to go into enemy backline unless it's really uh, really really easy it's that simple and then in the execution part i need to um, just play it very good mechanically i just need to make sure i condemn the rex side very very well so that is pretty much what I should do though. So let's take a look at the actual fight, okay? So right now we have all of these things in mind. So let's see how um, the vein plays in this specific situation. So right now we're seeing that she's actually approaching to hit the closest target. She's very, very safe. She's respecting the brom. She ulted immediately as the fight is started. She actually got hit by the uh, Aurelian Soul. Let's take actually a look. I'm going to show you first on normal speed and then we're going to go uh, from there. Let's take a look at this. So we're talking about the same examples, of course. So let's take a look at the vein and see how she played this. All 
Okay, so let's actually try to recap and what happened. So she actually walked up right here on the Brom. She tried ulti. She gets hit by the Aurelian Soul. She tries to kite as much as possible from again the threats, the Renekton, really good condemn, and then the tumble for the Rek'Sai. Rek'Sai tries to just ulti, the Ezra ulti hits, and she is dead. Did she play the fight good or not? Well, theoretically, she respected a lot of the things. Can she get hit by the Brom? Not really. She's walking up when he has no Q. She's aware of that. Right now, she's actually getting slightly ulti by the hitbox of the Aurelian Soul. Right now, the Renekton wants to go on her, but he immediately just condemned and also uses the Dumble to Rexa. So this was a relatively good fight by the vein. Yes, she didn't respect the Aurelian Soul. Yes, she walked up a little bit too much forward. Conceptually, this fight was played around Diamond, let's say. So it wasn't like Challenger, so it wasn't perfect, but it wasn't Bronze. You can't say, okay, Vayne played like shit there. No, she respected the Brom. She was aware of the Q, of the cooldown right there. She condemned the, uh, the, the Renekton. So the execution was reasonably fine in this case. The second team fight is this one. So let's take a look at this one. What do you think? Did she play it good? Did she play it bad? So in the beginning of the fight, she's actually just walking on a very, very, very safe angle. She's actually just staying with the Nautilus, so so far so good. We talked about the Rek'Sai being able to flank, tumble immediately. Right now she tries to condemn immediately, so this was so far so good. She tries to ulti out, tries to condemn, flashes out, and this was actually a pretty reasonable way of playing it. The fact that she's actually fighting Aurelian Sol right now, it's not good. She should just back off. You could argue, oh yeah, but she, she was gonna lose the game anyways, right? Look at Garen, everyone is dead, so it's GG. Well, you're right, but she still shouldn't approach this because right now if Garen is actually really good and she takes this wave, they might not be able to end, even though they, in this specific case, they do have the wave mid lane as well. So, you could argue and not argue that, you know, Vayne should not actually fight uh, with the Aurelian Soul. In the beginning of the fight, she actually played it really well in the positioning. Nice stumble, nice mechanics. She couldn't just E there, uh, the Rek'Sai. She tried to, to ulti immediately. She condemned and then she tried to like back off. The W of the Renekton just hits her. That's pretty unlucky. Now she's actually using the invisibility. She's actually kiting on the left, which is super, super smart. And tries to not get hit by Aurelian Soul. This Aurelian Soul, he's like zoned her like really hard. He's 12-3. He's like really, really strong. So it was a bit of a, of a hard team fight to actually begin with. Right now, maybe you could argue that she should have just tumbled a little bit faster instead of just auto attacking. Did you see that? Uh, she was auto attacking the target like a few times, a few times where all what she should do here is which she should press condemn right now, which she did. And then right now she should press a tumble to get the invisibility. This specific auto attack actually made it so the Aurelian has the range. Right now, the flash was pretty good. The mechanics was overall good. She kited on the left. Pretty good right here, how she played it. Still, still, I would say that this was like a, maybe a high diamond uh, team fight. No, it wasn't the Masters. No, it wasn't the Challenger. But we can't say it was iron, you know. You can find mistakes here for sure. It wasn't clean. Uh, but at the same time, she was respecting a lot of the Rek'Sai. She was kiting back. She was trying to really uh, not get... Uh, obliterated but yeah we see that the gold obviously in this specific game is like not really a winnable game so she just loses the fight the second example is this one right here with the ezreal uh we have a bard uh and so okay so ezreal right here how can they kill me how can i die well it's yone ulti varus ulti ash ulti and echo flank what is the biggest thing from this i think ash ulti is pretty big because it's global um, and then also Yone uh, ulti is quite big. That you can also argue that Varus can also hit you. True, true, true. But since you're in the team fights, you should be pretty far away from the Varus. So yeah, Ash ulti is one. Yone um, ulti is two in terms of severity. And then we do have a Varus ulti and the Echo flank as well. You can also argue that the Ghost in that can be a big thing. Uh, but really, we want to make sure we're not really saying everything about all of these champions. So for example, if I'm Varus. I'm not saying, okay, I need to, you know, uh, avoid Bard ulti, I need to avoid Belvech uh, knock-up, and I need to also avoid Gwen. Well, you need to just keep the distance with Gwen, really. You know, don't need to avoid Gwen, because he doesn't really have any big CC that she can use. So don't try to, uh, you know, overthink about it and try to be thinking about, okay, but, you know, Tristana has the jump as well, I need to... Well, true, she has the jump. You need to respect that, but it's not like you need to play the whole fight around that, really. It's more important to think about the Bard ultimate, for example, for a Varus right here. So, very simple. 
that these are the targets that the, these are the things that can kill me the things that i can do really to kill them is well first of all we have bard ulti we don't really have any reliable engage here other than bard ulti in the knockup of the of the bell vector that's not really the best but the ezra should just throw q play very safe if the the enemy team is gonna go into him ezra is very very safe this is why he also went for the frozen heart right here so he's gonna try to kite back hit the closest target let the enemy team to go into him instead of using his e in and uh, when he has a good opening he could consider going with the e aggressively but since they have so many targets that are just aggressive uh he should most like most of the cases just use e uh, defensively so poke with the q stack the conqueror and when you have a really good opening with the e, you do it that's how you kill them and ezreal is really around the conqueror and around his uh, his essence river um as well we're talking about the bard as an engage and we're talking about a quite decent composition right here let's analyze another example when i play ezreal we actually need to respect first of all the camille e she's actually pretty strong with two items rakan ultimate and potentially either ultimate from rise behind me or just his w the Jin should be pretty easy to actually play around in the the rengar since i have exhaust should be pretty easy to play around so let's take a look at this so we're starting this uh Baron, I will actually show you first how I played it and then uh, we can discuss it. So, pretty easy, right? So, at any given time in these teamfights, if you saw, I'm actually trying to really hard to respect the Rakan and to respect the Camille. So in the beginning of the fight, I'm actually playing on the left hand side here because I saw Rakan on the right hand side. I'm still focusing on the Nash, but I'm definitely staying on the left angle here. I try to kill the, the Rakan. I woke up into him intentionally because I know I have an E and I have exhaust on him. So I just immediately exhaust him. So he's going to have a very hard time to, to get on top of us. I kill him. I try to stay behind my teammates and I try to actually use this Evelyn. She gets engaged on and then all what I do here after the Camille is going to go on the Evelyn is I just hit the closest target and I, then I E here because there is no threat here and that's how I play the team fight so you saw there on the Rakan that I actually was walking up forward because I had my E and I had my exhaust so I knew that it's quite hard for him if I use my E to predict my E really so I try to use that you can also consider playing more aggressive if you know that you know the CC that is gonna kill you you can dodge some, some somehow let's say I play Sivir uh, and there is a blitzcrank i don't need to be scared of the hook if i know that i can either flash through it or just spell shield i can just play a little bit more aggressive like in this example next example the same game so right now we need to respect again as we said the most important thing is the camel the second most important thing is the rakan ultimate so camel e really so the distance we need to respect the distance the rakan we need to actually pay attention to his abilities exactly like if he wasted it on someone else and we can go we are good to go but otherwise we need to respect it and then rise w and the gene ultimate so let's take a look at this so i am playing pretty slow right now i'll actually show you the team fight first and then you can have your thought and then we can discuss about it Pay attention to Ezreal right now. So he didn't do anything crazy, right? He was just staying safe and then when uh, he's good to go, he is about to just look to E uh, for us right now you can actually see his positioning is really really good staying always behind of his teammates always pretty safe always pretty slow he does have his e he doesn't really throw his e in if he knows that it's really really unsafe so let's actually analyze what he did in that specific situation positioning wise so in the beginning of the team fights everyone was grouped up there he didn't really stay close to the milieu because he knew that rakan can just flash on him he has very good positioning right now as he's staying on the left hand side He's respecting the Gene ultimate as well. He sees rise. He Qs first, Ws, then uh, just backs off. He stays in a very good position right now as Milio got caught. Keeps throwing the Qs, keeps throwing the Qs here. Tries to go on the Rengar here. And then he knows that Yone is already dead, so he doesn't really commit for it. He stays behind of his carries. And right now when Kamal is going in, uh, he is absolutely safe here. They try to go really on the Evelyn, 
But uh, yeah, Ezra, so he positioned himself, he didn't do anything crazy. You might like, oh, this is easy, you know, he just had good positioning. But this is really educated positioning, like you don't need to be Kumayushi to, you know, you could argue, yeah, but you can play more aggressive with my with your E, you know, if you want to do more damage on Ezreal or you, if you simply want to carry a lot more games and games that are like very, very difficult when your team is behind, you have to E forward, so you have to know everything about the enemy champions, when they can kill you, how can you dodge those, and you have to push your limits forward. I agree with that. I just mean that in 90% of the cases in, in like below, even below Grandmaster, you just have to keep it safe, play it safe, play front to back, just under understand what your champion is designed to do and after that you're good to go really because there is not really anything crazy that you need to do as an AD carry other than just having like okay positioning right now let's watch a fight of a challenger player this is Nikki, and let's take a look how he plays Lucian Nami so the first thing that we're gonna do is that we're gonna watch him team fight So let's pause here for a second. So we have Galio, which is actually pretty easy to, to avoid as Lucian. We have the Janaki, which is a bit like pretty easy to avoid because Lucian has the E. And Garen, which is pretty easy to avoid. Shivana is pretty easy to avoid as an AD carry, especially with Lucian, let alone the fact that when you play Lucian Nami, it's even easier. So what Sneaky did here is that he played quite aggressively. So um, with, in these matchups, when you have a Nami or when you are, you know that the the chances of them catching you are like really, really, really low. Uh, you can play really forward like this. Like look what he did in the beginning of the fight. So he doesn't know what it's Galio, but he just cues the minions, and then right now he just ease immediately. He sees the Janna has no Q right now. He immediately is. He has Nami behind, and he's pretty forward. Look at him. He doesn't click back. He's just very core, very forward. You can play this playstyle, especially when you know exactly that the enemy are not able to kill you. Like look at this Galio. He's unable to really do anything because the Sneaky always has his E. So he played the fight really, really good. In this specific situation, he respected very good the, the Galio. He respected very good the Shivana. He played pretty aggressive because he has an army. Yes, you might argue that with this playstyle, if you're always eing in, there might be a disadvantage. And I'm going to show you in a little bit the disadvantage of this playstyle that might look a little bit like Int if you watch like Ruler, if, if you watch like other players. For example, if you look here like Sneaky, he walks up, look at him. He plays really forward, look at him plays really really forward and this playstyle has obviously like big disadvantages that it's really on the edge sometimes uh, because you might get caught like people that play with Nami people that play with dashes like when they play well, especially when you play with Nami or Milio you have to play really forward when you have a Janna you have to play really forward so if your Janna is good she's gonna protect you and she's gonna save you of course be careful if you do this in low elo because this in low elo doesn't work so much I wouldn't really trust so much my Janna or Nami unless she proved to me that she's good or unless I'm duo uh, which doesn't happen very very often so if you're diamond one plus and you play with the nami or you have a jana you should definitely consider playing super aggressive like sneaky does right now um very very aggressive even like testing limits this is why you're gonna see again as i said the gumayushi ruler like going in so aggressively and still coming up on top because one they know what can kill them two they know that they have a support that they can protect them and three uh, they also execute the play very very well so it's all about you understanding you know how a champion works like of course the super has to understand what what uh, she needs to do as well if you want to do this play if you if you if you're playing below below emerald then you shouldn't even worry about that you should just like if you're Emerald 2, Emerald 3, Gold, just play your game, hit the closest target, and if it's safe and you can make a play, aggressive play, that only relies on you, um, you can do it, but if you're like, okay, this play was gonna work, if the if, if the Janna was gonna use the Ignite E perfectly, and use the Q for the Galio E, and then if she's gonna use the Ultimate, and if she's gonna use Heal before the Ignite, it's definitely gonna work out, because, no, you don't need to make a play, like, if, if your support has to do everything perfect, in order for the play that you choose to take uh to work it's a bad play straight up it's a bad play you can argue that in challenger is different because everyone you know they need to like uh, be in sync and in grandmaster we're not talking about that we're talking about below grandmaster and especially like in lower mmrs you're not going to expect your morgana to shield you when uh, the hook is going to come up it's, it's that easy it's that simple okay it is that simple 
as I said, this aggressive playstyle can have big benefit, big, big, big uh, benefits, but also uh, like it can be very indie sometimes. You're gonna lose a lot more games if you choose to play like this and you don't know exactly your limits. Let's look at Sneaky right now. So as we see right here, he just gets absolutely pranked. He can't really escape here. He played really, really aggressive. Again, uh, he didn't know about the ghost of the Galia right here in this specific situation. He just went in really far away. He hit Shurelia uh, and he couldn't really do much. So be very careful. You're going to see again, again, a lot of AD carries doing this with the Nami. You can try it if you're like super high elo or you want to test your limits. But again, it requires one, your Nami to be on the same page with you. Two, it requires you to also know your stuff and know your limits. And it requires you to also know every single thing or like most of the things about the other champions in the game so you have to have a little bit of experience of you know uh, other champions so this is why when someone tells you play only one champ and you're gonna climb it's not always gonna work like this because if you want to climb at some point you need to know really well what the enemy support can do what it's that your support is able to do and if you never played nami but you just know her abilities it's not really gonna work out do you know that the, the trash hook is 19 seconds do you know that the blitzkrieg hook is 20 seconds do you know that the brand double is 10 seconds these are all very important aspects of the game that you need to you know play around it and in the team fight it's very important. Do you know that the wind wall is 30 seconds? It's very important. You played against Yasuo, right? You played against Yasuo and it's so hard to teamfight against Yasuo, especially as an AD carry, and you don't know that the wind wall is 30 seconds. You don't know that Samaira W is 20 something seconds. You don't know that Vladimir is around 25 seconds, the W level one. So these are like really important information that you need to know. So playing only one champion has a huge disadvantages um, in many, many, many situations. So be very, very careful if you're, if you're, choosing to follow the normal advice of you know uh, people and coaches on the internet again uh, do your research and i think personally i think that uh, if you want to be a good player you also have to play a little bit of other roles and a little bit of other champions like first you have to play your champion let's say you play only lucian but i would also have some normal games on other champions of ad carry first to begin with and then other champions of support uh, as well if it's possible it's like really really good and this is how you're gonna be a well-rounded player really more than anything else so that's why really if you truly want to improve you should get coaching you should try to get coaching try to get better try to see your own mistakes because if you follow skill kept if you follow this kind of website it will actually more hold you back more than help you because there are very niche things you know when you say okay play only one champion i mean yeah it can have advantages but it can also have this have disadvantages you know so or a recall on a cannon wave these are like myths that if you try to do them in game then you're gonna be like hard stuck you're gonna you're gonna do these things you're gonna be like wow i know so much but i'm still hard stuck how is this even possible you know my team is well i don't contradict that emerald is wheezy or uh, you know your team is good but but of course if you you just the fact that you watch skill cap it actually gives you the illusion of knowledge or maybe you have the knowledge but you don't just know how when to apply it exactly and this is why I recommend you to try out coaching if you haven't done it already it's really really good for you and it's personalized exactly for your needs the next situation that we have right now is the challenger drug dart the best ad carry the best israel in europe uh, playing against a game against hansama and i want to show you that there are possibilities and there are cases where you can go on the back line you can focus the backline as an AD carry, even though most of the cases it's safer to just go on the first target uh, there are a lot of cases where you can just go on the back line let's actually take a look to see uh, what happens in this specific situation let's watch the play first Did you guys see how aggressive he played in the beginning? The reason why he actually actually went on the back line in the beginning is very, very simple. He knew his limits. So he is going on the, he could have just gone on the GP with Q, W, Auto, and then E right here and just focus the GP. But he knew he had an opening. He eat into GP because he knew that one, 
The only thing that can kill him right here is if he hits the barrel or if Azir is gonna go for the for the R on him. So he's paying attention to the Azir. He sees that he used his E. Did you guys see the jump? He used his E, so Azir doesn't have any way to get on top of him. Two, the barrel is right here. So if he's Eing right here, uh, the barrel can't kill him. And Ash has no ultimate, and Hansama has no ultimate with Varus right here. So why why did he go on the backline target? He went on the backline target because he knew that none of the abilities of the enemies, abilities that can kill him, abilities that are threat for him, like the GP Barrel, for example, or Azir Ulti, they were either on cooldown or he knew that he can outplay them, whether he can use his E, whether he can use his Flesh. He knew that he can outplay all of this ability. One, he can eat through the, the Barrel. Two, he can just Flesh to the HW so he doesn't get slowed and stuff like that. So I'm not like... If you know it's actually super safe for you to go on the backline and it's a very reliable play, it's a play that you know it can't miss. Okay, it's a it's a kind of type of type of play. Okay, they have the Varus ulti. He, it's easy to for him to hit me, but I'm gonna flash over it and it's 100% play or 90% play. Sure, if it is very reliable, you can do it. And this is why he did it in this position as well. Uh, be careful because I mean, obviously, if you're not reading the game very very well, there are a lot of situations where you try to go on the back line target yeah, then you just overextend you die and you lose the fight so as an ad carry yeah i gotta be very careful when you're choosing to do it because it just might uh, really uh, it might backfire so be very careful with that there are a lot of situations where you actually when you're going into the fight you need to actually think it twice you need to reconsider your option really because many situations uh, the number advantage or the number disadvantage will actually show you whether you should approach it or not. In some situations, you shouldn't even follow your teammates, you shouldn't even fight, you shouldn't even like die with them. Let's take a look at this situation. Let's take a look how I play this in this position right here. So this is the Ash and they have Aurelia, Rakan. Do you watch my positioning here? At any given time, they're unable to really do anything. You would say, yeah, bro, but you're not doing damage. What are you doing? Well, the thing is, at any given time, if I try to approach this fight, I'm either like either going to die and for the, well, I'm actually just going to die or just burn my summoner spells. And for the amount of damage that I do right here is not really worth the commit here. Look at this. Rakan W hit it. So I actually woke up because I see the Rakan W. Right now, wait, I can't hit it because the Viego can just flash on me. Rakan W comes up very soon. And then right now, I try to hover my, like my Silas just in case Rakan goes overly aggressive right here. I don't back off immediately, but I don't really stay too close. So I'm actually, this is the perfect positioning. It's close enough to your teammate to help to actually get a few auto attacks. But once the fight is over, you're actually. Too, you're actually too far away for the enemy team for any of the members of the enemy team to be able to engage on you so you have to be close enough to your teammates and for you to be able to auto attack but also far enough to the enemy team so you don't get caught so this is basically the concept here in the next situation i will show you exactly how much it can actually matter the number advantage so if the enemy have Significant number advantage, we're trying to not fight. Like there is no reason for us to fight. So now I'm actually escorting the the Viego here. I'm actually hovering a little bit. Then I try to go back to bot. But then when I see Twisted Fate tries to um, make something happen on the river, the Viego is getting caught here. So I need to just hover him. The thing is, Viego is almost dead. So I'm just going to follow a little bit. And then after Viego is actually safe, I escort him. I look at my wave. My wave is fine. I run. Right now, the Yumi actually gets caught. I take her, and right here, I could always try to ulti. You know, we have Twisted Fate ulti, even though he's recalling, he's most likely looking because it's like uh, high elo ish. It's like low, low masters, diamond two, diamond one. Uh, so, if I could ulti here, uh, he could just come from behind. He could just do make something happen. The thing is, it's not needed. They have number advantage. I don't need to fight. There is no need for me to force there. I mean, it is true that some of the situations you might choose to fight with a small number of, uh, disadvantage. For example, let's say I'm right here um, by myself and we have three people here from our, our teammates and five people from the enemy team, but we have a few that is pushing top lane. Theoretically, we should give the objective up. Practically, if it's just a 4v5 and it's not a huge like a 2v5 or, or a 3v5, I would consider hovering my teammates because they will most likely go there and die by themselves. So maybe I can sneak some kills. So there are situations where if your teammates are all around the objective grouped and 
you are close to them and you're like hey we shouldn't fight this but it's just 4v5 it's just a slight um, advantage for the enemy team if my teammates are stupid and they are like looking to hover to try to get the drake to fight i'm gonna hover them i'm not gonna encourage it but i'm gonna hover them maybe i can get something there maybe i can get a kill as they die but i'm gonna try to stay around them uh, just in case with a small number advantage of course if it's a 3v5 or a 2v5 i would ping them danger danger and i would consider abandoning them ignoring them because if it's a huge number advantage the chances of your team getting something positive there is very small so it's just better to just give up completely so there are situations in league of legends when you can actually be 4v5 and choose to follow your teammates choose to to, to fight if your teammates are like all grouped and all in a place and you know drake is up and there is an objective um, again if it's if it's a 2v5 or if it's a huge number advantage just ping your teammates and run abandon them but i wouldn't consider abandoning them in solo queue when it's a 4v5 just because again or a 3v4 um, just because you know a pro player will tell you no bro but we shouldn't fight you know they're fighting stupidly on the drake and you know uh, they, they shouldn't be fighting there let me just get more farm so i can carry which is true but it's not realistic in low elo most of the people are going to take the most stupidest fights in the world so you need to be able to adapt to it we need to be able to you know choose hey is this a winnable fight or is it absolutely lost fight if it's absolutely lost fight you abandon it if it's a winnable fight like a 3v4 a 2v3 uh, a 4v5 you can consider hovering your teammates if they're already there and if they're just in a place um, and of course another situation that is like very very important is the following i'm talking right here about mana and resources so for example right now they're fighting on the river and this is an urgency for me to remove right and i move instantly the thing is there are situations when you have really really low mana like zero mana and your champion is very like you, your champion needs mana and majority of the case the cases you need mana even if you play Ezreal, especially if you play Ezreal, but also if you play like, let's say, Vayne or Caitlyn, you need the trap, you need the E. So in situations where you're on the lane and they are fighting for the objective or they are starting the objective and you have huge low mana or huge, uh, huge uh, low HP, either one or another, let's say you have full mana but you have low HP or you have zero mana and you have full HP, you should consider to abandon the fight and not even get into the fight sometimes it's even better to just not fight sometimes the best fight is really to not fight at all really so we just have to play it very 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 safe and not do anything there the majority of the cases like before you fight just ask yourself is this a good fight do they have a huge number advantage then if they do don't fight can you have a high chance to die there because you have low hp well then don't fight do we have zero mana and you know you, by following you're not really gonna do much or any significant impact then you should not as we can see right here right any she sees this fight it's a big fight it's drake she doesn't even give a shit why it's because she's one mana what am i gonna do there throw q 150 damage and then throw auto attacks i mean you can argue that she has a stun which is fine but if that is, is right here If, if the Kastner is right here with TP, while he has pretty decent items and he gets a shutdown or he gets multiple kills, it's just over. So she prefers to just not follow at all. Of course, this doesn't apply if you play a champion like Blitzcrank and you have like just enough mana for the hook and Q or a champion that has a lot of utility. But it does actually, um, it does actually apply for AD carries. Thank you, thank you so much guys for watching this. Please like, subscribe, hit the notification bell. Consider getting coaching if you truly want to get better. If you think this helps you, imagine what you can get in the real personalized coaching session. These are just some tips. You should definitely try it out. You have the Patreon where I post videos like this every single week. They are actually first posted on Patreon if they are ever going to be posted on uh, the YouTube. So if you want tire list and premium videos for AD carries, um, go to Patreon. It's amazing. Thank you so much for watching. Please like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, everything. If you want to support this channel, thank you so much guys for watching. See you next time.